welcome to Exandria Unlimited Calamity. I'm your humble GM, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Uh, it's so wonderful to come back here for Ooh. another episode of Calamity. Now, last week, I didn't talk very much at the top of the show. <laughs> this week, <laughs> I'm not gonna make the same mistake. I'm gonna talk a little bit longer and give Marisha time before I throw to her for some announcements. So. <laughs> <laughs> Marisha, what's your announcement? Oh my goodness, perfect throw. Uh, I'm getting Had the hang time to of it. I'm getting hang of it. <laughs> I am so excited, you guys, to announce you guys. a familiar problem, which is a new one-page RPG from Darrington Press. Now, this is a game of magical familiars on a mission that was created by myself. Wow. I know, <gasps> alongside. Honey Heist designer Grant Howitt. Yeah. Let's go! Woo! Also, Crash Pandas, he's the best. Yes. Love you, Grant. Yes. Uh, in a familiar problem, you'll play as scrappy and stressed out familiars, just really trying to get a grip on the chaotic lives that your adventuring party subjects you to. <laughs> and you try to make a difference any small way that you can, <laughs> with what little abilities that you can. <laughs> To prove that you're up to adventure, band together and undertake a daring quest of your own. Now you can find the game first at US stores participating in Free RPG Day on June 25th. Nice. Oh. Internationally on July 23rd. <laughs> and we'll release it on a big scale later this year. Big scale. Big scale. <laughs> big scale release, big guys. Scale they release. call me Big Scale. So stay tuned, but go to your friendly local game store first and support them and get some free RPGs and free RPGs. Amazing. You can learn more at DarringtonPress.com. In addition. Oh, wait, there's more? Announcement number two. Announcement number two. Foresight to Die, you guys, it's back. Episode three airs this Tuesday, June 7th at 7 p.m. Pacific on Twitch and YouTube. Oh. That is the first Tuesday of the month. Um, come listen to people talk and fuck around. That's <laughs> it. It's in the calendar. It's great. It's in the calendar. A uh, Travis for the merch announcement. Oh, I gotta throw. Whoa. I gotta throw. You guys, That's it's cool. it's 2022, which means we have a new Pride shirt. Hey. hey. So come celebrate Pride with our new "It's Love That Makes People" T-shirt. Oh. Oh. Isn't that dandy? Oh, I should really hold it up. God, yeah. Laura's gonna kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the little dice and stuff. It's so cute. Oh, uh, a cute. portion of each of these sales go to our charity partners at Outright Action International, which is a nonprofit aimed at uh, researching, documenting, defending, and advancing human rights for LGBTQIA plus people Very good. around the world. We love them. We've uh, we've been working with them for years. And uh, grab your new pride shirt. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Well, announcements. great, uh, <laughs> really, great. <laughs> really good announcements all around. Um, uh, for those of you coming back, this is episode two of Exandria Limited Calamity, a vision of an ancient past in the world of Exandria at the ending of the Age of Arcanum and the beginning of something strange and horrifying. Uh, for those of you that uh, want to come in and join us, uh, again, this is episode number two. Uh, I know, I do. I suppose a recap, like a little bit of a recap. Last week we met. Yeah, yeah last last week we met our wonderful uh, heroes at Avalier in the Ring of Brass, the um, somewhat uh, under the radar council of those who actually do the moving and shaking of the flying city of Avalier. Uh, we move and we shake. We met the guildmaster of the Golden. Scythe, Nidus Okiro. That's my name of my character. Uh, the <laughs> Keeper of Scrolls, Pesha Porco. Porco. First Knight of Avalir, Sir Xerxes Ilares. Uh, Herald of Avalir, Loquacious Seely. Oh, well, hello, thank you. Uh, Architect Arcane, Laren Coromar Seely. You're welcome. Uh, and Senior Sight Warden, Serret Pinch Agrupne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the eve of the replenishment, which is the great holiday, uh, uh, once during its uh, once uh, every seven years after a long seven-year venture, the city of Avalir, traveling along Alexandria's many ley lines, returns back to Kathmoira, its terrestrial sister city, and realights uh, as the peak of the mountain on its ancient base, where once it stood as a full mountain, uh, and all of the magic that Avalir has stored up in its etheric net, all of the ether that the city has traded 
created for and gathered and bartered for is released into the continent of Dominus, where it creates a flourishing of crops and newfound magic and all sorts of wonders and replenishes the land. Uh, and we are on the eve of such a replenishment uh, this very day. However, some strange tidings have come to the city as some artifacts, some debris, some things broken, corroded, and dispelled made their way aboard the city from its last port of call. You're talking about Bolo? Bolo. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty rude, dude. <laughs> pretty rude, pretty rude. To call someone debris, if I get called debris, you are debris, my man. I don't think he's wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> Why you call me this? Um, <laughs> The important thing is this, the detritus of the ritual of Vespin Chloris. Look him up! They did a whole video about the guy and what he did in the history of Exandria. Literally, you can go look it up. It's an amazing video. It's rules. It's very cool. Uh, made its way aboard Avalier. And something rotten within the heart of the city has begun to be exposed by our brave heroes. Only time will tell if they have caught it before it is too late. Without further ado, we return to Avalir and Exandria in tonight's episode of Critical Role. <laughs> Turn to exactly where we left off. There will be no uh, skipping forward. The events of this night are all a little bit too critical, a little bit too close together. Important things happen in the span of a single breath here on the eve of the replenishment. We return now to a small room off the side of the Grand Banquet Hall in the Palazzo Porco, where Sarah Agrupnin crouches in a room with a disanimated scarecrow soaked with champagne, a mutilated dead body covered in carved runes and blood, and a cracked mirror in which you now only see your own reflection. Where do we find our intrepid sight warden in this moment, having just witnessed the screaming visage of Vespin Chloris. And I will clarify here in this moment, uh, it is a face you recognize. Uh, easily done the uh, at the hawk's nest, at the Hall of Eyes back in Cloudstone. Uh, every senior Archmage, anyone in any terrestrial city, anywhere on Exandria that you have traveled, has their image recorded and their arcane mark written down to be recreated uh, at a site warden's discretion with a minor illusion. So you, earlier today, when you were going into the room, had Vespin Chloris's face animated with illusory magic in front of you uh, to know the man by sight. Although I cannot say that you recognized him well in the mirror, given that most of the skin of his face had been peeled off. <gasps> 
Uh, he threw his hand against the mirror and shattered it, right? Or he is, dived forward. It could have been his hand or his head or something along those lines that shattered the mirror. Right. Um, and then disappeared. Yeah, in the moment of its breaking, disappeared, and it, you were looking at a mirror again. I've pressed it since last, last session. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I also <laughs> forgot the scary so. part. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, was, it was legitimately it's scary. Perfect tech. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sarah will uh, stand there with his his hawks still still drawn, sort of at uh, at, at a ready position. Mm-hmm. I'll say, "Well, that's not something you see every day." <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I'll scan the room again. I'll holster the uh, the hawks, and um, seeing this mangled face uh, next to the dum da dum dum, the hummy does. Um, <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Uh, I'll I'll go through it again because I I never finished the investigation of the actual scarecrow. Right. Um, you uh, conclude your investigation there. Um, uh, you arrive at what you assume. You know, normally in a construct there would be some animating thing. There'd be some glyph or some. Point of of interaction where there would be you know its heart, its engine, something central to kind of animate the thing. Um, you go into the Hadmadad. Most of it is just fabric and a little bit of stuffing. There's some sort of like uh, you know just something to sort of pad out the clothing a little bit because these are just sort of for menial tasks. At its center, there is a uh, glyph. Um, with the emblem of the golden scythe on it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, created by the golden scythe. Um, and w- I think you would know on your investigation check, actually, for this one, go ahead and give me an arcana check if you'd be so kind. Okay. Yeah, that's the big numbers, kids. Hang on. Here we go 12. <laughs> um, you have. <laughs> level 14, yay! Uh, you, on a, a 12 is enough for you to know that you are disturbed by the lack of animating material within this Hadmadad. I mean, you know that the Golden Scythe has had to find some way to put a fleet of constructs out on the market. I mean, these Hadmadads are not only created by the Golden Scythe, they are sold. People can buy them. You can get them in different colors, you can customize them to whatever your like house crest is. They sell these things. They're they're and so as a result, you're wondering if it's like there's no proprietary technology within it, but you're looking, it's like opening the hood of a car and looking in and just seeing like a Toyota emblem and no engine. You're like, where's the thing that makes it go. It can't just be the logo. Uh, so on a 12, you are mystified, but have the feeling that that being mystified is not due to you not understanding something, but rather you think that most people that create constructs would not understand. But it's easy enough, Nidus could probably explain it to you. It has the, the Golden Scythe logo on it. Cool. And as I check it, there's nothing that I need to make safe. There's nothing that this thing was carrying in terms of like a weapon, an explosive device that I would recognize. Nothing that feels like a security breach. I'm going to perform this on the corpse behind me as well. No security breach here. Okay. But I'll say this: I don't think on that even on a twelve, I don't think you would be comfortable with the lack of a security breach. Meaning, if the engine's not here, it's somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Um, anything on the <laughs> anything on the on the body with the the. Ch- Chunks of flesh, <laughs> flesh missing. Um, <laughs> Runes in its face. Let me ask this. Uh, you, so for this one, you can give me an investigation, but I'm going to tell you straight up that the the biggest pressing thing about this is actually probably a medicine check. Ooh. Um, so if you if you get a super high investigation, I will give you some stuff. If you make a medicine check here, even a lower DC might produce more answers. Let's do medicine check. Go for it. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Six. Call him Dr. Pinch. <laughs> I think that you know Pinch enough. Pinch. On a six, <laughs> on a six, you know enough first aid. You know enough to like triage a wound, right? And as you <laughs> hands come down. Stop bleeding. <laughs> 
<laughs> so like pressure, yeah. <laughs> um, so you slit his throat. As you open just like the wound that you delivered to kill him, on the inside of his throat, it is riddled with growths. Growths? Growths. Mm -hmm. There are things on the inside of his throat that look a dark, pinkish gray, mottled. Um, you would, you're not a doctor, you'd have no words for these, but uh, things of flesh that are not supposed to be here are here. Uh, it looks like this being clearly was powerful enough to cast and hold concentration on an invisibility spell, but looking at this, there's like something inside this man's body that should not be here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not going to like that, <clears throat> so uh, I will stand up. I, I'll, I'll kind of actually drag the body into the middle of the floor a little bit, even if it's leaving a, a trail. Mm -hmm. um, I'll exit the room, and I'm going to search immediately for Xerxes. Um, as you are uh, preparing to exit the room, you hear a noise. A sending stone in your back pocket, in, in, in one of the secret compartments that you keep. Uh, a small sending stone is I'll retrieve it. Uh, as you hold it aloft and move it so that it can create noise, uh, you hear a voice say, this is Talon to Wingspan, Talon to Wingspan. <laughs> yes. I am in position and I am reporting that Egghead is preparing to break curfew and sneak out of the house to go to a party. And you said that she's not allowed to leave, but she's about to leave, and she has no idea that I'm here. She has no idea that I can see her. She's about to do it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> this is, this is crazy. <laughs> This is your son, son. Kier. Yeah. This is your son, Kier. Uh, um, he's using code names for Talon, you himself Talon. and your daughter that you have never heard before. Um, they change a lot. The code names change a lot depending on what he thinks is cooler that week. Um, oh and you are standing in a room with a dead body, listening to your son describe <laughs> your daughter about to head out to one of what have to presumably be many parties happening on the eve of the replenishment. Sure. Uh, Talon too. This is. Wingspan. Oh. Say again, this is oh. Wingspan. Communication's a little, a little shoddy. Wow. Did you say Egghead is snuck out? Affirmative. I see her, she's, uh, she snuck downstairs into the kitchen and she got a bottle normally reserved for uh, Wingspan and Clear Eye and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I saw her take a swig from it, and then she made a face like it was really bad. And then she took another swig from it, and then made a face like it was even worse. I don't know what it's about, but I know she's up to no good. This is very good, Talon too. very good. No. You are in no way to engage with Egghead. She's dealing in dark magic. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Keep an eye, but keep your distance. I'll be, I kind of look over my shoulder at the floor <laughs> in the room. I'll be home when I can. I, uh, I love you very much. Is that, uh, uh, oh, I love you too, Dad. Sorry, I thought we were still doing some No, no, talent too, talent too. <laughs> keep, keep, keep objective, uh, keep objective professionalism. Yeah. No, no telling who oh, could be watching. Cop, copy that, Wingspan, and, and, and I, and me too. Me too. Thanks, son, I'll, I'll be home later. Okay, do you, do you know if Bob's supposed to come home tomorrow, or is she gonna miss the whole, is she gonna miss the whole replenishment? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. She, I think she's gonna try and, and make it back by, Tomorrow, your mom's a very busy scientist, brilliant woman, as you know. Um, but it, you know, she she works at her own pace. But I, I'm sure if she can be here, she will be. Affirmative. We'll keep an eye to the skies, Pop, and I'll, I, we we span, uh, and I'll, over and I'll tail Egghead and make sure that 
no funny business. Okay, uh, uh, copy that, Talon, too. Don't get, uh, again, too close and stay away from the evil dark magic uh, uh, liquor, uh, uh, drinks that she's. Uh, Don't worry, Dad, I already collected a vial and I stored it in my evidence locker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Talon, too, where would this evidence locker be located? The evidence locker is in a secret compartment under my bed. Uh, no, I. It's in a different place. Don't worry. I, it is nothing. It's nothing. else is under my bed. I have to go. I gotta go real quick. But I'll talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you too, uh, Talon. Too. Over and out. Over and out. It's actually just over. But he always says over. <laughs> <laughs> out. It's a snitch. <laughs> and you're and you're a big fan of that. <laughs> yeah. My son's loyal. My son's loyal. <laughs> <laughs> that was so amazing. Oh um, my god. <laughs> this kid is way cooler than my kid. <laughs> <laughs> that kid didn't get sucked into any portals, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, um, so a sobering moment. A sobering moment. Yeah. Um, however, you are back in the room and you were about to leave the door. I put the, the sending stone back in my pocket. Deep breath, exit the door, look for our first night. Um, you exit. Pesha, out on the floor, you're still holding court. You see um, Sarah walking out towards the front entrance. Um, and actually, I think I'll have you, both of you join, but we're going to wrap up what was happening outside as well. Um, outside the palazzo, we just had both of you interact with Purvan Sewell before his mm -hmm. vanishing in some movement of divine magic and vanishing from the city of Avalir. I wanted to give you guys one last shot each at an insight check oh. against Pervon. Um, just to add some context, he told some pretty heavy stuff to you guys, um, but I just wanted to, to see if there's any last... Little thing we can glean? Yes. Well, I got a 24. But a 16. If, but if I fail, I can add another d4 to it. On a 16, I think you recall the main thing that you recalled before that, that Xerxes recognized, which is the one thing that he was hinting at he would not say. Yep. The words, betrayer gods, never left his lips. Hmm. I'm absolutely fixating on that. I think that on a 16 insight, because that is very, that dwells within your mind, why does Xerxes think he didn't say it? Because he's scared. Because he's a coward. Mm -hmm. There is something you recognize in Pervon that as different as he feels he is from the mages of Avalir, he actually shares in common with them. And I think Xerxes feels this way both of some of the Archmages of the Septarian and beyond, and also this champion of the gods. Some ability that the mind, the heart, the soul are in control of what is real. And that if you do not speak it, it will not be. But some things are, regardless of if you are afraid to name them. On a 24 insight, you've interviewed a lot of people, and Pervon told you a great deal. More knowing the fact that the prime deities cannot see what is unfolding is pretty profound in and of itself. But Pervon was also speaking very cryptically. And as a master interviewer, someone that's interviewed people a lot of times, I think that you're insight into Pervon, right? And if he was holding on to anything else. The kind of 24 insight, you don't think he was. Okay. In your experience, people that are being, people that have actual secrets, people that are being really secretive, deflect. If they have something they don't want you to know, they start talking about something else. People that act cryptic are often concealing not information, but the lack thereof. And you think Pervon's carefully chosen words were not protecting dangerous knowledge, but were protecting pride. 
Something's going on, and he didn't know what it was and didn't have the ability to speak to it. That's at least from your experiences as a reporter, that when people are that guarded, it's often because they're in free fall as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you enter back into the Palazzo, the four of you converge together. Uh, based on what I just gathered, Yeah. I know where Nidus went. Yeah. I'm gonna come back and meet you here. I'm gonna go get him. Now? And bring him, yes. Shouldn't we get as many of us together as possible right. first? Right, so I'm gonna go bring him. Mm-hmm. Where did he go? And I'm gonna telepathically conjure uh, Tempest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tempest alights down here. Um, uh, incredible. Uh, as Tempest alights, ba- uh, takes off with you into the air, I'll be back. Well, uh, okay, I mean, all right. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to just allow this to right. come down to a roll of the dice to see, because Nidus was also heading out post haste. Right. So we're going to let this be a roll of the dice. And Nidus also headed out a little while ago, prior to right. the conversation with Perva. Right, yeah. he took off ahead of me. Um, we're in dress shoes. So There's no tread on this. We're just going to make this a straight up <laughs> dexterity <laughs> check. So a dexterity <laughs> check from Xerxes okay. and a dexterity check from Nidus. Okay, <laughs> Dex on Dex. To see if I can find him? Dex for yeah, to see if you can Dex. Or rather, to see if you can beat him to his destination okay. and get and intercept him. Flat dex. Is it my Griffins? Dex check or movement? Uh, oh, this is actually just your. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, you can use Tempest, so you okay. can use Tempest's dexterity if you prefer. Flat dex. Flat dex. That's it. Come on, baby. No, you got this. I don't want to get caught. You won. <laughs> Let me see that boy. Okay. I got you. You got this. This guy. Oh, what did you get? <laughs> I rolled a one, so. Oh, thank you, <laughs> God. I rolled a three. Yes! Well, I mean, it's a three total with my. Well, so I. But, but mine's a total of seven. Okay, you win. Oh, Ooh. thank God. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what heavy plate will get you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, absolutely. Perfect. My dress shoes, my untreaded dress shoe, my, my, my beat your heavy plate. It, it's, <laughs> um, uh, Incredible. Um, so uh, we actually are going to move. So Nidus, you take off. You're you're off in Tempest, f- yeah. flying as fast as you can. Um, you, but you get to the to uh, the scythe really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm actually going to say on that dexterity check, you just grab a porter. You just boom, dimension door straight to the scythe. Right. Um, you walk in. You are back in the central warehouse. There's a bunch of like confetti on the floor. There's like a couple little bits of like popcorn and stuff from like food carts that went out. It's like a ghost town in here now because everything is out on this. This is like put on a show, right? Yeah. Um, uh, as you do, uh, you land here and see off in a corner talking to a couple of different sort of like stevedores essentially. Mm-hmm. That there is Alessander um, who looks up. Uh, as it has become night, you see that he actually has a small little candle lit on the top of his conical hat to sort of light his way. <laughs> and you see he turns around and says, Good, Master. Hello. I wasn't yes. expecting you back, sir. Alessander, a, mo- a moment, please. Oh, very well. <laughs> One minute, my friends. Ah, well, it was incredible. The Sphinx improvised an entire (laughs) monologue sort of talking about the the glory of Avalier. He's only been here for one day. It was Uh very, I was very touched, actually. Do people know, did did people applaud? I mean, was it a long, was it like a slow, did he do it along the route, or did he stop at one point and Um, kind of like? He lost the crowd in the middle, but he. (laughs) I mean, that's gonna happen, you know. But he got to the end and roared really loud. Well, there it is. And people just remembered. Remember the end, you know. They don't I mean, remember the middle. Of so. course. Well, I'm uh, glad it was a success. Uh, a success. Um, Alessandra, I need four automatons uh, right now. Yes, uh, master. I, 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 I truly loathe to be this person. Alessandra, impossible. Alessandra. The, it is the eve Nothing of the replenishment. Everything is spoken for, my lord. Well, uh, can we allocate? Can we uh, shift four over right now? I, I, I can find some off duty. Well, well first of yes, all, yes. The, the, I, we, well, w- w- would Hadmadads do? Uh, do I know if Hadmadads would do? No, no. This, this is quite complicated. Uh, <laughs> for what? Alessandra, I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the thought, but we need, uh, we need more. 
we need better. Carol Elks? B- b- Colossi? You know that those will not even fit Colossi. in the. Got it. Uh, you see, he look, uh, um, give me, give me either Arcana or History yourself. Great, happily. Because there's stuff that Alessander is not going to bring up because he just doesn't have the bravery to bring it up. Uh, Twenty-one Arcana. There, there are automata that you guys are working on mm-hmm. uh, that you are building under contract for the city mm-hmm. that are prototypes mm-hmm. that are not uh, uh, not. That literally, you're going to use the month on the ground to like make active, but they are ready to go right now. Yes. Uh, Alessandro, um, I've had a thought. Yeah. Let's, um, can you requisition in your special way four of the por- uh, prototypes we've been working on for the city? Right? I'll take them this evening, and we'll likely have them back on the morrow, if not the following day. He looks at you and says, you want me to go and activate the taxman? Yes. Sir. The taxman? Uh, Come on. <laughs> That's a fucking code name. Uh, you see. <laughs> it makes me nervous when you write things down. <laughs> you see, he says, "My lord, I, I can I, I can activate them, but the, these are supposed to be completely mint preserved for of trials course, during course, the." Of course. Of course, of course, Alessander. However, <laughs> this will be the first time yes. they have been. Yes, Alessander, I understand, <laughs> right? right? But you have to understand, we are on the precipice of something truly magnificent, right? And this is, uh, we will find a way to refurbish them in such a way that no one ever notices, Alessander. It will not be a problem. I, I, and if it is, that is on me. I will carry that weight. Guildmaster, I cannot fathom the weight you already carry. I hope you are all right, my friend, and know what you are doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. So please, activate them. I've already dallied enough. He walks with you into a chamber that leads into a sunken subterranean area, and he arrives at warehouse isn't appropriate. You can't see the other end of this room. It stretches into the city for maybe a quarter of a mile, and you see fleets of arcane engines, all keyed to emblems. You see the arcane equivalent of server banks, upon which all of the engines that do not exist in the bodies of these constructs are all kept here in the headquarters of the Golden Scythe. And you see Alessander walk up to four of them so new that some tools still rest on an artificer's workbench nearby. Uh, quickly moving from the chamber of engines, you walk back up to an area of the warehouse, completely dark. Alessander, the candle on his hat lights, and you see hulking at about 12 feet tall, massive steel constructs. Step up. They are, they look brutish and hulking, but you know that the engines that power their cognition, not sentient, but their perception, their reflexes, their instincts, their ability to follow out complex will. It's top of the line and state of the art. Another testament to your genius. And those blades on their back sheathed, you know what those can do too. Killed master, what is thy bidding, sire? Uh, what would be uh, the quickest way to the arcane heart that doesn't involve me marching for 12-foot automaton through the uh, center of the city? Um, you could pull a porter. Um, a porter steps in and um, 
Uh, Alessander looks up. This porter, this like it's young, thatch haired girl. She's got the bellhop uniform on. Looks up. Hmm. See, Alessander looks at her as she walks the automatons and creates the gate for you to go down to the, the Meridian Labyrinth. Um, and you see, he looks at you and casts the message cantrip in reference to this porter. <clears throat> Should I put the young porter on? Archmage, Archmage Porco's list yes. of our friends with of course. bad memory, yes. Um, She'll see to it. Uh, <laughs> y'all are evil. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You don't know. You don't know. You don't, know. <laughs> you don't get it. You don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand what we're working on, okay? I'm an innocent reporter. <laughs> I'm an innocent reporter, <laughs> goddammit. Um, I love the picture. Um, cool. Um, and you uh, vanish into the Meridian Labyrinth. Um, uh, back up. Uh, so, Xerxes, you are flying straight there right now, but we're actually going to jump back to the Palazzo real quick with Loquacious, Sarah, and Pesha all together. And uh, and then he just uh, got on his Pegasus, and, or whatever it is called, and then flew away. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this Pervon fellow seemed all sorts of out of sorts, and it's uh, it's it seems to be Pretty, uh, pretty heavy. Whatever's going on. What did you find? Is anybody trying to sneak a listen, stay okay. close, act like they're not uh, dropping? Do whatever you want to do to find out. Give me perception checks. Ooh. Yeah, don't try. That sneak means up. maybe. Uh, twenty-five. Uh, I would say that anybody trying to sneak up would have to be invisible, but even that wouldn't fucking work. So, um, uh, I think you might want to, I think that with that 25, you probably move the conversation back to the ivy table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I, um, I turn and I announce to the room, <laughs> another round on the poor coes. <laughs> Uh, you see, uh, everyone cheers and, and laughs and makes merry. Hey, to the, to the porcos. You see, the one guy who cheered Avalier before us says, The porcos, more like the party cos. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, throws another down the hatch. <laughs> Love that guy. Great energy. Um, so generous. Great of you energy. To not <laughs> charge your guests for the, the round of drinks. The drunker they are. <laughs> The less they'll notice. Sure, sure. <laughs> Let's go. So we get back to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll say, guard your faces. Don't give anything away with your expressions. <laughs> My face turns into your face. <laughs> oh, that's fucking cool. Mm, I, st I steal myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> right down to the teeth. God, it's uncanny. Teeth? No, I don't have any teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, all incisors, big flat <laughs> white <laughs> teeth. All the way around. Just big ass molars and a beak. <laughs> Breaking all the rules. <laughs> uh, the uh, I'm afraid the game is afoot. The rats are already inside the fucking. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> I went to go investigate the, the Hamidah that fell in the room. Yeah. As I was doing that, I became aware of an invisible force that was behind me. I spun and struck down an individual. He's sealed in the room. He was covered with runes carved into his body, pieces of his flesh you killed missing. someone at Pesha's party? I did, they're no one important, okay? I wouldn't repeat that I'm mistake. I'm sure his mother thought that he was important. <laughs> oh, look, Rishis, it wouldn't be a first. As I was doing that, I spun and saw a figure in the mirror. I saw Vespin Chloris, or at least an augmented visage of him. And he turned and looked and said that we would never make the Wild Mother's embrace. The mirror shattered and he left. Now, I haven't had any fucking champagne tonight, before you ask, but I think this situation requires a higher level of our attention. He said we wouldn't make the Wild Mother's embrace, which you interpret to mean Landing landfall, yeah, which is in a few hours. Yes. So we've got Pervon, works for a god, 
says bad, bad things are coming from bad, bad gods mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. This man, Vespin Chloris, says we won't even make it to land. Mm -hmm. My ex-wife ran off to do something. Well, I see one clear uh, uh, way forward. We have to tell no one of this, do nothing. I will make the normal announcement as we get closer to the replenishment and make sure that everyone is happy and uh, secure and feels like everything's normal and we'll just sort of ignore ignore it for now. You can tell people on your end and, you know, work on it or whatever, do whatever research and investigating you have to do, but for now, we just make sure that everyone stays calm and do nothing. Do you agree? Oh! <laughs> I'm, uh, to a sense, I do agree that panic never solves any problems. We should maintain a level of control of the population, but I don't like this many coincidences. It's a decision that we all need to make together. L Lairon left, Xerxes also left. Lairon took the bow, correct? Yes, and Nidus. Nidus is off doing his thing. I don't even know where he went. We need to I alert. Think I know what Nidus is up to. If what you say is true, the fate of Avalir could lay in the hands of Lairon. And as Patia says that, we move deep underneath the Meridian Collaborative. Oh, <laughs> you. Your loving ex-wife. <laughs> Your loving ex-wife. Um, Deep within the Meridian Labyrinth lies the heart of Avalir. Once known as the Apparatus Arcane, this crystal engine lifted Avalir by the command of Emir Porco into the sky 292 years ago. Now, they named it the Apparatus Arcane because at that time it was the only one. But since then, there have been many, many more. There, the registry of the Porter's Guild, there are, uh, in addition to that, there are the Codex of Keys, the, the Helm of Avalier, uh, the Lay Rudder, which connects to the Navigator's Guild. However, we are in a room just off of the Lay Rudder and we see a quite fascinating new machine. Abria, I'd actually love if you could describe the engine that now we behold and the uh, the chamber that we see. Is it a fuck machine? <laughs> it started off as a fuck machine. It's a swing. It's a, it's a, it's a big swing. Cut a hole in it. Yeah. Uh, well, I like that. Uh, there is, it starts with this like big central pendulum that swings back and forth that is generating and sort of uh, holding this like massive miasma of uh, like ether and arcane energy. There's uh, like a circle of uh, batteries that I've uh, requisitioned and built, and each of them glows with like a slightly different shade of green mm -hmm. uh, that are kind of feeding into this pendulum. And uh, in the center, underneath it, uh, is just this massive platform. And uh, there are runes inscribed into it, but it seems like, if you look really closely, uh, you know like when you draw on paper and there's like papers underneath and you can kind of see the imprint of other ones. She's been trying lots of different ones to try to figure out the right array uh, to move in a new direction. She's worked really hard on the arboreal calyx, but she needs to go in a different trajectory and hasn't figured it out yet. Um, I love it. Um, 
I'll say one thing, by the way. I don't think you would have worked very hard on the arboreal calyx. Okay. There's actually a different, uh, but um, the, the there's there's a uh, the machine in front of you. Um, so like the, the, this attaches to the lay rudder, which I think that you've done a tremendous amount of work on in order to make this machine possible. Um, and I think also somewhere in this room, uh, there is a small token. Not something that is of mechanical significance. A small token of an old friend. A gift given to you long ago. A locket, simple orb inscribed with runes to be filled with something of safekeeping to remind you that the long years could part you, that friendship would win out in the end. What do you remember of your old friend Evandrin as you look at this locket? That's, that's it. Despite the like, sort of a suffusion of warm memories and good feelings that attended him handing me that locket. All she can remember is those last few days before everything broke bad and uh, the panic of not knowing how to help him and not knowing how responsible she was as he began to fade. So it's that like burst of joy and then the creeping guilt. The memory of your friend becoming translucent, incorporeal, and fading, such that when the time came to inter, there were no remains. Mm. You behold this work in front of you. I have a question. Yes. Is this, uh, is this what's being dug into what was formerly uh, the like heart that the Drisha. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. This is uh, what what you now behold is an engine that you have named, and I'll let you say its name. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Flux capacitor. Um, however, as you prepare this here, um, Dweomer is here with you. Um, Callum is not. Callum is out working on a bunch of Eldritch battery stuff. You know, there's a lot of work for the replenishment that needs to happen. Um, but you hear approaching footsteps, some of them quite heavy. Well, this area that's kind of been dug into and dug out, uh, there are a bunch of the like run down uh, automatons that I needed replacing. So the moment I hear footsteps, I'm going to cast animate objects mm -hmm. on them and set them up as a guard behind me. Oh, um, these constructs come back into being momentarily animated simply by the word of command from the city's architect, Arcane. They leap back to action. Literally, I think just you blast ether from a receptacle on your own wrist and give them the momentary life that their initial construction no longer can. And uh, as they stand back up, you see Nidus Okira approach um, with Automata you have never seen before. Your oh. Eminence, I bring exactly what you asked for. Those are new. Yes. Uh, we. So much is being used in the name of the replenishment that I had to uh, tap into uh, a stock that we were waiting uh, to reveal or start um, to release into the city uh, upon uh, rising again. But for you, an exception can always be made. Thank you. 
Gliomer looks to you uh, on her unflinching, warforged face. <laughs> Your eminence, the automata present within the chamber do not bear the glyph of the armor arcane. Oh, interesting. Who made these? You guys did. Oh, we did, of course. The Golden Scythe. You bypassed entirely. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to let uh, bureaucracy <laughs> slow us down. Incredible. Um, I have several questions about what their purpose is. They're so big. This, this can all. What are the blades on the back for? This can all be discussed <laughs> later. <laughs> Understood. Is sure. It, is it possible? Are we? Is it going to happen? Do you have everything you need? I mean, you said it up while uh, you were leaving, and I, I just, I couldn't. Do you actually have all that you require? I think just with a quick flash, I'm going to drop Rary's telepathic bond. <gasps> yes. If only, and I go and run and grab the papers. There's tonight, in the next day. This is my best the chance. Script. Yes, you spoke yes. You that earlier. So it has to be now. This comes every 120 years. I might be alive to see the next chance at this, but they won't. Evandrin wouldn't have lived to see it. I don't. I don't think Quay would have either, so I have to, it has to be now. I have to prove that it was worth it. Yes. And you will. Yeah. You will. We have a bit of metal I have. I have a, I have a destination. We're, we're gonna move the entire city. Well, it is truly a blessing that you came to me, that you have allowed me to be part of this. This is everything I wanted as the dragon of Avalir. I just run up and hug him. Thank you. I you guys, have had anyone to talk to you about this. You embrace under the uh, impervious gaze of the two mass, of the four massive constructs surrounding you. Uh, Dwyomer steps up uh, and grabs the corroded bow and displays it to you. Okay. There's enough energy. We've siphoned off so much from this last trip. It's gotta be worth it. It will be. Will you say? Of course. Okay. It would be my honor. Uh, the, uh, the taxmen uh, step in, Dwyomer gives them their instructions. They take the bow from you, and you see that uh, one of them gazes down at it, walks over to another engine, puts their hands doing the work that these automata do, and you see its gauntleted steel hand <laughs> animate a part so that its hand splays open and a raw vent of arcane power <laughs> goes into an engine. Dwyomer inserts the bow into the top, and it begins to spin as golden light spills out of an opening in the top of a stone dome. <laughs> the corrosion peels off the bow. Pure gold, shining brighter than the sun. Uh, you see that one of the taxmen <laughs> Its chest begins to sort of like come apart, and another tax man just steps up and grasps its shoulders from behind. Uh, and it begins to like fuse into its brethren in front of it. As the engine speeds up, Dwyomer steps over to you and rushes towards the engine in the center of the room. The astral lay right. What? She begins to interact. She begins to interact with glyphs, uh, and you see in a corner a tiny model of the lay rudder, a just ever so small recreation of the machine in the anterior chamber. And 
above the engine, you see uh, light fills the chamber. Dwee Armor says, Architect Arcane, we are reading a signature. 0 0.504, 0 0.508, 0 0.512, 0 0.516, 0 0.530, 0 0.548. Um, and you see that uh, the lay rudder in your hand surrounds you. Light, energy. One of the three ley lines that converges on ancient Toramunda, on Kathmoira, which you are an hour or two away from being directly over. Ley lines are invisible. It's pure energy of Exandria that flows, the veins of magic, the stuff of creation. Nidus, you behold as the spirit itself of the world is rendered visible and realize you are standing in the bloodstream of the cosmos. I think Nidus just hands up, tears falling down his face. It's beautiful! <laughs> it's truly incredible! <laughs> I'm gonna move my arcane ward over him in that move moment. <laughs> <laughs> the dream of the dream of a cabin boy deckhand taken aboard a pirate ship to look at a flying city and to say one day I could be at the helm of a great working of magic. You watch the beating heart of your world flow magically through this room. And as the bow finishes spinning, a rod of pure gold slides into the light and the stone dome closes. The spinning stops and the engine pulses, mirroring the heartbeat of your world. Silvery white light with a feeling of warmth, heartbeat that matches the feeling of being inside the cradle of life. The miniature lay rudder in your hand, the engine of the anterior chamber just outside that the navigators use to pilot the city around Exandria. A small little gem lights up on its exterior and the new engine that you have created, the astral layright, mirrors that gem. It's a mediocre mind that tries to replicate what's already been. We're going to go somewhere new now. Yes. All of us. Yes. As you say that, Laren, you feel the miniature model in your hand lift off and begin to travel. It's traveling in the same direction as your city. And as it travels, you see two more gems light up on the lay right. And another two, and then four more. And the trajectory of the lay rudder, your little miniature train, this nothing more than a toy, really, stops moving sideways. It moves up at a diagonal. But what a strange diagonal. And as it moves, it becomes translucent and fades, vanishing from this plane. And you see the gems on the lay right. Mm -hmm. Beep, beep and a signal of recognition. Somewhere beyond this realm, your toy is safe and in one piece. It was worth it. And I go over and grab the locket. It was worth it. I'm 
I'm speechless. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, my role is is concluded. I mean, you are our pilot now. I mean, when when whatever you need, if when you're ready to share this with everyone, I mean. <laughs> I mean, the fact that this is coming with the replenishment, it's all perfect. It's just perfect. I, we, we can finish uh, the replenishment uh, as expected. Yes. And during the celebrations, during that month, we'll take care of all the business. Of course. And then we will tell them that the next departure yes. will not be across Exandria, but to New Plains, anywhere we want to go, everywhere. Glorious day, I can see it now. Fuck, okay, hold on, that's probably fine. Okay, that's normal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we all hang out down here, so. <laughs> um, Dweomer looks, you just uh, used up about 8% of the city's energy sending that toy extra planer. Uh, and as you look at the readings, it's this is this is a this is a nightmare. It, it uh, and you look and Dwemer says, "My lady, something unusual." Uh, and you look at your energy grid, like look at the readout where everything's going. Um, the arboreal calyx, which is an ancillary engine yeah. of the lay rudder, um, the actual sending of the toy took about like. A fraction of a fraction of a fraction of energy. It was actually more efficient than you were planning on it being. But something about what you just did, the arboreal calyx sucked up almost 8% of the city's energy. God damn it. Uh, can I what, Can I try to figure out what's going on with with the calyx? Um, piece of shit. Give, me, give me an arcana check. Fuck, oh, that's a bad roll. Uh, yeah, but you're like arcane and stuff. Yeah, not enough. 16. 16. Um, so, uh, first of all, what is Nidus seeing in this moment as you, like... <laughs> the, the, uh, the siren is cool. We just had our beautiful <laughs> yeah. envisioning the future moment, now there's just a big red light going off. I think Nidus is just kind of like, just an uh, insight check on Laren to know <laughs> yeah, give what me, the vibe. Give me an insight check, and if you want to deception, you can't. Of can. course I yeah. do. Oh, that was almost a natural one. 13? Yeah. Uh, versus me? Yeah. Nah, 18. <laughs> nah. No. I am in a dead panic now. It was in the immediate flip from like, this is it. Mm -hmm. She was about to get like emotional and calm to like, oh no. Like, it's very obvious that she's dealing with something that she doesn't have like yeah. parameters for, and any sort of digression into anything bad is giving her worst case scenario vibes Got immediately. It. Um, you look at this. Uh, Dweomer turns to you, Nidus, actually, and says, Guildmaster, yes. the issue is not with any of the technology present in the Layrite. There is simply an energy concern within mm -hmm. the etheric net. Mm -hmm. um, and you look, and so on a 16, I can tell you, even if you, honestly, it's, it's fitting that you rolled a 16, because the Arboreal Calyx is of the pieces of technology in the city, one of the ones you hate the most. Yeah. It is an engine that is part of the Drashari tithe. Uh, cool. So, oh. essentially, I see, I see all these confused faces. Yeah, Everyone, the, 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 yeah. the Drashari tithe. Every, yeah. Yeah. The Drashari tithe. tithe. Every, I love everybody. Like everyone's got secrets, but man, does Laren have yeah, secrets? Right. Um, I don't think I have any secrets. <laughs> Sam, I oh, I what? know that's not true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they're fun secrets. <laughs> um, so, so um, uh, 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 on a sixteen, here's what you know, right? The replenishment. Avalir travels the ley lines of Exandria, trading with cities and civilizations all over the world, collecting gold and resources and magic, right? Especially magic. Ether, raw magical substance, which is, is uh, uh, you know, 
obviously the, the beings of this world don't use the term spell slots, but that concept of the magical potential held within beings, magical objects, things like that, that exists in this world, the understanding that raw magical power is there. And Avalir has this ability to extract and hold ether. That's not an accident. Way, way back in history, when Toromunda was a single city, and Emir Porco and the mages of old Avalir wanted to, found out that the mountain was filled with broomstone and wanted to take it up, that city, Toromunda, had been founded by the Gao Drashari, an ancient order of druids that tended, that tended the holy sites of uh, uh, of the, the history of Toramunda, or actually the mountain itself, Mount Igora, the, the, the ancestral mountain. This was uh, very significant. It was a place where the Dawn Father and the Wild Mother defeated two of the greatest primordials of Dominus back during the schism and sealed them away under the earth and, and was part of the ending battles of that schism. It was a place where elemental magic permeated throughout, which the Druids tended to. The, the, oh, some of the earliest Gaudrish were Janazi, and uh, and also that elemental permeation is what attracted a lot of wizards here uh, after Toramunda was founded. Um, when the wizards came and said, hey, can we take the top half of this mountain and have a cool flying city, the original druids were like, no, <laughs> you may not. And the replenishment was the concession of those wizards. It was, it's, it's not, you know, in the modern day, modern day being in this ancient prequel series that we're doing, um, but in the modern day of the Age of Arcanum, the replenishment is sold by the Archmages of Avalir as being a great act of charity. It's not a great act of charity. It was an obligation to the Druids of Toromunda, something that they said they would do to justify taking the top of the mountain. and. The replenishment does renew the crops and bring back magic. There were also, in your knowledge, a bunch of important things the druids wanted to do with that magic. Now, cynical minds might say, that's the druids' cut for letting the top of the mountain go. But the druids also said that there were really important things they wanted to do with that magic. So the Drashari Pact, also known as the Pact of Crown and Throne, right, was the original agreement between the wizards and the druids. Um, Crown and Throne became Avalir, the City of Crowns, and Kath Moira, the City of Thrones, and it was all about how they would apportion this magic. So, you've been building out the etheric net for a long time. 25% of the city's ether is spoken for from that pact. So you got 75% to play with, 25% has to go to these things that were part of the original agreements. So the reason you don't know a lot about the arboreal calyx is that that's your utilities bill. You've just always needed to send a certain percentage of stuff there. But when you look at it, you see that that calyx alone is more than 50% of the tithe. Like that, that engine is, is speed, like this one engine that you know doesn't do anything that you know to be useful, takes up a double digit percentage of your entire city's reserves of magic. And as you were looking at the energy structure, you see that it flared up when you did this thing with your lay right, and it sucked up a lot of energy as you did that. And the last thing I'll say is, <laughs> when, you, when you look for, um, when you look for a, how do I put this? Um, as you are looking for like, an instruction manual, something, because you never had to interact with it before. Being an old piece of junk, at least it's reliable, it never needs maintenance. Yeah. It's just something that sits there, sucking, taking up hard drive space and sucking up juice, being a kind of piece of machinery that you don't particularly like, uh, but there's no instruction manual. Like you're looking through your own like spell book, your like records preserved here in like crystal memory within your engines, and everything built by mages comes with incredibly explicit and precise detail about what they were thinking, why they built it, what they wanted it to do. And this one says, this is the amount of energy that you must apportion to the arboreal calyx during the replenishment, end of list. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Do I? I would like to pinch whatever like cable is running to the calyx. Is there any way for me to like bottleneck that? Like, I just don't want it to take any more of my precious, precious energy. And that might be a bad thing, but I don't know. It's old technology, and it's probably fine. <laughs> um, give me another um, Arcana check. Yeah, you're proficient in Arcana. Oh, thank God. That was a natural one. <laughs> oh. Okay. 27. Incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I think you just see that she's fully panicking right now. I think I just come and lay a gentle hand on your shoulder. On a 27 Arcana check. Yeah. Yeah, there's stuff you could do here. It's not as simple as pinching a cable. This thing is really tapped into the roots of the city. Um, you also know that the lack of a manual. I'm gonna say on a 27 Arcana, you don't get the technical answer that you're looking for, but I'm gonna do some quick math. Mm -hmm. Oh, calculators yeah. out. Beep boop. Um, hold on one second. Yeah, this is this sounds about right. Um, uh, the arboreal calyx isn't as old as the city. Uh, it's 119 years old. Uh, 119 years old is when is the date of the last replenishment. Um, it's a replenishment when the Drishari Pact was updated, which was a big deal back in the day. Now, this is stuff that's not going to be in your documents. This is going to be up, honestly, probably not. Patia would have more about it in her library, but it's honestly outside of both of your home courts. This is magisterium stuff. This is magical law. So you would have to find a way on the eve of the replenishment to like bust into the librarium magisterium to like find out what's going to how this was updated. But you do see a record that this engine was built 119 years ago which I will point out on a 27, some quick math on our master architect's part, is the first replenishment after the ascension of the Raven Queen. Oh, fuck. Okay, uh, we have to go get more in, uh, we, uh, I need yarn, I need go <laughs> I know. We have to go find the mag magisters. I need to know where it's taking my energy. Your eminence, it is uh, the even the replenishment, and of course, we could make it happen, but is there a chance that this can wait? No? No. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. I will make phone calls and connections, uh, and uh, we will make things work and happen. Uh, I'd like to get on my sending stone. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. uh, put a put a call in. Well, I think I mean I feel like we should probably just go find Patia. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you two are going to go find Patia. Who are you leaving here with the astral lay right? Which again, miraculously works. It worked. You know that the thing you have dreamed of is possible. Oh, I felt the heartbeat yeah. of the cosmos. Yes. I think better. I was about to. I'll give her a call. Um, I just yeah. turned off her fucking radio. Yeah. I turned off turn the off CB phone? radio. You can, okay. you can, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. yeah. um, send your text, girl. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. you go to the, you each go to like your ring of masks and yeah. play charge at the same time. I want to go to Xerxes really briefly. Uh -huh. um, who flies <laughs> to, ex and then, we'll, uh, then we will bring the party back together. But Xerxes, yeah. Yeah. Um, you arrive at Excelsior Plaza, where you see the Herald's Tome. It is a revel here. Um, you see that people are partying and laughing, huge major images. Uh, you see that there's a bunch of professional bards casting huge illusions and music playing in the square. People are drinking and making merry. Um, life is good here. Uh, uh, and you see, um, uh, you see that there is the, the, the headquarters of the Golden Scythe, the vault and everything else. So I am arriving to where? To where you think Nidus would be. Uh -huh. uh, I'll say you just walk in and see yeah. Alessander Kyrus there, who you recognize as one of Nidus's right. uh, most trusted. And you see, he goes, Oh, sir, it's a pleasure to see you. Yes, yes, it's pleasure, pleasure. Where is Nidus? I need to speak to him right away. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, he, um, oh, he, well, he, funny story, he, uh, <laughs> uh, give me an insight check. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which, uh, Alexander's sure. persuasion, is it, is it plus 16? Uh, <laughs> 20. <laughs> what if this little light is lit up, though? Yeah, exactly, like his little candle. Yeah, his little head candle. Look over here. <laughs> um, you watch a very a man whose whole job is keeping account ledgers um, feel suddenly very frightened. Not of you doing anything, but you you know the look people give when they feel like they're about to be in trouble. Sure. Yes, <laughs> and he goes he goes like, well. It's very funny. Who knows the um, the guild? Uh, I completely in like mm. in, encroach in his space, yeah. and I put my hand on his shoulder, and I give a gentle tap, actually. Yeah. And uh, and I say, my friend, there's no time for this. It's urgent business. The first knight of Avalier is asking you, where's Nidus? Give me, and I'll leave it totally up to you. <laughs> You can, <laughs> you can give persuasion or intimidation, and the intimidation would not go wrong. It's not like you're intimidating him, like I'm going to hurt you, but it right. is, there is like, you are, there is a pressure from yes. above coming down. For sure. So okay. either one of those. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the kind of person to try to scare okay. somebody. I think it's a persuasion. Okay, go for it. Coward. 29. Damn. <laughs> Wow. Um, Natty, he he looks at you. And you see, he goes. First night, the Guildmaster Akira is with the Architect Arcane within the Meridian Labyrinth. How long ago did he leave here? Um, you see, uh, he is in this city. Can nobody keep a damn secret? <laughs> um, on a twenty-nine persuasion, no, they cannot. Um, <laughs> um, you see, you see, he says. Um, the Guildmaster is within the Meridian Labyrinth. He, he has taken a a porter there, but but the young lady, I believe, has already um, recused herself to other Thank guild you. business. And I leave. Uh, you see, he says, first night, I, I should warn you of something. I'm already gone. I'm already jumping back oh, onto. Uh, uh, <laughs> you uh, take us. Yeah. I I I, <laughs> I jump back onto Tempest and I go like. I soar up above the city, yeah, to get like a bird's eye view and to try to process some of this stuff that is kind of happening. The stuff with uh, Pervin and trying to find Nidus, and I look down at the festivities and all that chaos that I had just seen on the ground, just to take a moment away from it, and I take a breath, and then I head over there, and as I mutter to myself, I hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> and I go to where he told me where Nidus was. How dare you? <laughs> um, you fly to the Meridian Labyrinth. Um, the Meridian Labyrinth is, I'm gonna ask you for a uh, an investigation check, if you'd be so kind. It's called a labyrinth, not a hallway. <laughs> I think at this point, too, I know that I'm, I'm heading into territory that's above. A five. Um, uh, so here's so here's the issue, right? Five is not great. Uh, so legit, legitimately, five is not great. Five is not great. That's it. But, but legitimately, here's the thing: you are able to walk through the Meridian Labyrinth. Yeah. Like the, you do not get lost on a five. This would probably repel and entrap you, but you wear the emblem of your station. And the truth is, as much as Laren likes to keep secrets, I imagine she also doesn't want the city's biggest warrior to not be able to come protect her very delicate machinery in case shit pops off. She talks so, a lot of shit and has given you very detailed maps. Um, come down here, it's dangerous, so, but also if I'm in trouble, please come help. Um, so you, uh, you are joined at the gate that will lead Back to Pacha's, you uh, find them in a antechamber. I don't think you're near the heart right now. I think you are probably a good pace out from the heart. Um, but Nidus and Laren, question: Which of the automata do you bring, if any, uh, or do you leave them to to safeguard or continue working in the in the heart? I want to leave everything up here. If Dwiomer is capable yes. of. Then of course. I trust her. You turn to leave and see the silvery Aormaton 
nod farewell and look up as these four massive steely constructs without any facial movement gaze down at her. Um, she says, all will be well. My lady, may I offer you my most sincere congratulations on the realization of something that has never been. Thank you. We'll be back soon. Um, you walk out and you hear the footsteps, the like the thudding footsteps of uh, Xerxes in full plate, and you guys arrive at the gate that will lead back to port, uh, back to Patience. Hey. Oh. Well, hi, brother. <laughs> Go ahead. You came to, to find us. Yes, what, I've been looking you for you. I couldn't find you. Yes. Ah, uh, we <laughs> need to come together. What's Huh? Do I get a sense of any of this? Yeah, I don't <laughs> oh, like oh, it can absolutely be, be deceptions and an insight. <laughs> right here. A million percent. Oh, it's a natural one. That's fine. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm not even there, and I can feel the shit. She just screams. Yeah. Oh. An eight. Right, insight check. Insight. I'm still clutching Evandrin's locket. <gasps> Uh, deception? Deception. 30. Oh um, my god! Okay, so Let's on go. so eight, so, on. So on an, yeah. on an eight, <laughs> yes. you see, um, uh, you see poorly concealed, concealed tear lines on Laren's face, like she didn't, she didn't get them all, and she is clutching a locket that you know was given to her by Evandrin, your husband. Mm -hmm. um, you know that, you know that she and your husband were dear, dear friends prior to, uh, his his return to Avalier and becoming first knight prior to you. Um, however, I will say this: as you notice, like, oh, Laren is in in a state of deep emotion and probably yeah. multiple of them. Before you can get a bead on any of them and do your like intense first night grilling, yeah. a fucking juggernaut of a 30 deception <laughs> yeah. check comes wheeling in. And I'm gonna say, N N the force of Nidus' personality completely directs the rest of this scene <laughs> as, as Nidus moves in. What, uh, what does Nidus do uh, uh, as you hear that from Xerxes? Xerxes, I'm sure there are many things that we need to come together and speak about. Laren and I um, needed to uh, come down to collect uh, a few items mm -hmm. before uh, heading back up to meet everyone. I deeply apologize to the group. No, no, uh, no, if no need, no need, no need. I understand, I understand there's a lot. We all have many responsibilities. Yes. Wow. And it's time for us to come together, Laren. Yeah. And I, 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 I approach Laren, and I just, um, I kind of catch the little bit that you have uh, missed. Uh, Thanks. Are you all right? Hey, look at me. I'm here for you, no matter what you need. Thank you. I need to talk to you. Uh, Let's get everybody together. There's a lot to talk about, and we're running out of time. Laren. Another first night of Avalier in this very chamber once told you, I'm here for you, no matter what you need. Yeah. Uh, you move through the gate. And the party assembles at the Palazzo Porco. Um, uh, uh, Nidus just has this like sunburn of sun where <laughs> yeah. the light is <laughs> going through his fingers. I think you're the first person in history to shout that at a magical phenomenon and live, right? <laughs> it's glorious! Oh, I'm totally fine. Okay, great. <laughs> I did like as we were you were describing. I was like, oh, it doesn't seem like it would be that loud. Like, but it's funny because then you realize in all those scenes, it probably isn't that oh, loud. Yeah. We hear a musical score, but for yeah. them, it's probably just like, oh shit, it's bright. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bright. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's just yelling because it's like, oh, the visual is loud. Yeah, you're shouting over your own soundtrack. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, incredible. Um, you arrive back now. So, question to Pesha: yes. uh, Do you think you would go to the IV? Table, or are you? Are you like the party's still very much going on? I would say, as a time check for all of you, it's probably about 10 p.m. right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
uh, so, so you know, you're still not even over Kath Moira yet. There's time to do stuff, but like traveling and doing stuff and talking and all this, this has taken a little bit of time, right? Um, would you do you think you go to the Ivy Table or are you joining somewhere more private? I yes, I think at this point it has escalated and I want something even more secret and private. Um, so I kind of like well, a question to you as well, DM. Um, when the eight percent of energy was sucked to teleport a little toy boat to another dimension, um, <laughs> rude. I don't like to that. Very <laughs> rude. Back. 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 Did I? Did we sense that? Did uh, was there like a little dip in the lights? Was there? Uh, <laughs> um, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would say, yeah, uh, everybody, exactly. everybody here, give me either an Arcana or a Perception. Uh, high DC, yeah. high DC. Or more than the other. Arcana or Perception. Hang on, hang on, what's higher? Why am I on the Oh, it's a dirty 19. Dirty. I mean, I mean it's a natural 19 for oh, a shit. 32. God, Damn. roads are wild. 32, and then? 26 for Arcana. 26. 15. 15. 15. 14. 14. Um, uh, uh, for you. Um, uh, sorry. So on a twenty, he can see an ultraviolet. That's why. Oh my God. <laughs> um, uh, there is there is no obvious blip. The lights don't go out or anything like that. Um, uh, however, um, the eyes of Avalier undergo a rigorous training um, to just feel. Magical auras and presences, there, and a couple feathers on the back of your neck stand up, like you just walked into someone's aura, right? Um, and uh, on a th what thirty what Th thirty two, on a thirty two, um, this accompanies feelings. Um, this is the exact feeling you get when the city arrives at the intersection of two or more ley lines and switches directions. Which you know, you know you're coming up on an intersection, but it's it's like yeah. it's not yet. Um, so it's a the feel of a big spell engine kicking up hits you, and you don't know what that could be. It, Another event in a long list of uh, things that are a little fucked tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <Yeah>. salty. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Do you want a cracker? <laughs> oh no! Oh no. my God! Uh, excuse me. Do you do you have a cracker? <laughs> <laughs> have we moved into the the double ivy room or yes, like yes. where? As we yeah, as we walk up, I um kind of you know flick my fingers a little bit and and trace a little arcane symbol and um. You see the lights dim a little bit Ooh. in the foyer, and uh, you know um, some uh, colored lights start to fill the room and like dancing spectral, almost like fireflies, and a wonderful dancing water show oh. starts happening, kind of in the middle from the gardens once again, further to just put on a show to get people to look over there. Yes, love it. Nice. As we slink away, once everybody. Um, I can sense that there's no eyes really tracking uh, us. Yes, truly you have ensorcelled everybody here. Uh, the show is, uh, is so captivating. Um, uh, and um, you all adjourn to the Ivy table with everyone totally enamored of the spectacle of the evening. Um, you have safety, security, and silence and are reunited. Laren, I did it. We did it. The astral layerite is up. It's functional and it works. It works. What really? It's you saw this magnificent. with your own eyes. You saw this. What's that thing? This is the first I've heard of this. Yeah. What's that thing? Yes. What oh. Is this? Um. Oh God. Where to begin? Uh, and can we move things along? I, it's it's ten, and the beverage ball starts in about a half an hour, and I, it's something that I'd really like to get to. Um, it's. You you don't go to the beverage bowl? What? Oh, it's in my early uh, days, yes. But <laughs> some of the sort of elite mages uh, get oh, together right. and they surprise each other. They turn, uh, they they bring chalices that have all been enchanted, and they can all turn one liquid into another liquid, and they just sort of trade them and surprise each other with what what drink is it going to be? Is it going to be mayonnaise? I'm or is trying it to tell you oh. that I've mastered interplanar travel for our entire city, and you're going to talk about a. Fucking juice bar. I can be late. 
What is this? What is this interplanar uh, travel thing? Uh, the next great moment in Avalia's history is what it is. The, the bow, the bow. Yeah. That was the last piece I needed something from another plane. And it's attuned and it's attenuated and it works. And I just, there's a problem with uh, the energy. I need to speak to some, you. Are the clo your site warden? You work for the Magisterium. I need to talk to them. I need to know what, what, why they changed something. The arboreal calyx came recently. It's 120 years old. It's new and it's pulling my energy. Can and you, I don't. Can you just sort of back up and dumb this down for us? You yes, know, please. when 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 you talk like this, I just I I lose track so easily. It's it's. Just please, simpler words. Could I try and uh, recite to you what it sounds like you've said, that you have secretly developed a way for Avalir yes. to travel to another plane. Yes. The entire city. As a city. Yes. Why? Because it's stupid to waste your time trying to become a god so you can ascend to another plane. If we can just all go there, then there's no gods. It's the only thing that truly separates us from them. They're not special. What, what's wrong with this plane? Why, why can't we just be here? Nothing, but why are we limited to this plane? That! Well, this plane's great. Everyone's happy and successful and... I'm bored, look at this distraction that they entertain themselves with. I think it's lovely. Did, did you see the, the fondue? Yeah, I did, I saw it all. The promise of Avalir was of exploration and knowledge gathering and growth, and I have dedicated my life. I've sacrificed so much. Others have sacrificed so much so that we could do more and learn more and What not do you expect to find if we were to go there? I don't know. Knowledge. That. Did you know about this? What plane? Yes. Any. All. Oh. <laughs> Speaking from experience, other planes aren't that great. I know you're from the Feywild, but we could. Imagine the immense amount of resources, knowledge, power, progression. We are simply limited here. The only thing that makes the gods what they are is that they have access to a whole another realm of arcane potential. I have it on good authority that Aeor is working on a weapon, something deeply destructive. I will not allow them to supersede us in any way. You knew about this as well? Yes. Yes, I did. And you? Of course. Am I the only one who didn't know about this? I didn't know about no, this. I didn't. No. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to keep this from you. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. It's and also much more glorious to boast when you've achieved something rather than watching it fail and but disappointing others. Let's be careful not to boast so soon. An achievement like this, once you start to tell people about it, then it's going to make us a target. Absolutely. Yeah. You have seemed distracted of late. I can I commend you on escaping my eye. Thanks. I. Again, I. I'm sorry. I. This is my life's work. And it worked. Worked? You. You mean you know it will work? No, I have sent an object into another plane. I, I came here, there's a problem only with, a, the arboreal calyx takes its tithe, that stupid bit of energy we owe to the druids down in Kathwera. But it took more and I don't know, it, I just have this feeling that either it's taking energy for someone or something that we don't know or I wasn't privy to, which is 
bullshit, uh, or it's some sort of stopgap to prevent someone else from attempting apotheosis. The Magisteri was quite loyal to their long withstanding handshakes for people who are long gone. Yeah. Shuffled off of this plane. <laughs> what good is loyalty to a dead person? This can't be a coincidence. We need to catch you up. What, did I miss something? Too many coincidences. Lots of them, yes. I Again. felt something, an arcane pulse. It's not my thing. <laughs> but Vespin Chloris, the archmage who disappeared in Vasselheim, mm. Mm. presented himself to me in a private room through a mirror and said that we would not make it to the Wild Mother's embrace. When? I was gone for like 20 fucking minutes. You're always Sometimes. gone at the most important times. Okay, oh. listen. Do you want to do this Personal, right now? You know, this I, seems my, like it's My just, wings kind of reach yeah. around. <laughs> Let Larry, me go. It kind of just Let me go. Out. <laughs> not, not, uh, not, all I'm not, saying not, is, <laughs> you're so focused on your own thing, as ma magnificent and monumental as it might be, but there's something going on in the city right now that actually matters to people, and you're just concerned with your invention, again, whether it works or not. I go over and I pull a goblet off of the <laughs> shelf behind a little mini bar in this room, and I walk over and I say, here, it makes whatever cocktail you want. Oh. <laughs> oh I'm gonna kill him. Mm. Why are cosmic? I understand. <laughs> Perhaps before we do <laughs> that, though, I'll fully kill him. I'm gonna need <laughs> help in connecting the dots. Yes, uh, I'm yes. a bit concerned that this was able to succeed. Congratulations. Right. Thank Congratulations. You. Okay. Um, but the timing of it, mixed with our approach, and Vespin making himself known, does that not strike any of you as. No, that's horrifying. Oh, I thought he didn't exist anymore. And the, the warning that came with the Matron of Ravens champion. Oh, the guy yes. with the dog? Yeah. Pavan. It was a wolf. He was like, ooh, bad things are coming. Oh, mm. your naivete. Oh. Yeah, so, not just bad things, bad god things. things. Yeah. And okay. your dreams. dreams. Yep. We cannot forget that as well. <laughs> who else knows of your accomplishment? Who else knows of your secret project? Yeah, who else have you told besides me and us? We truly meant no disrespect. Of course. You are the literal mouthpiece of the city. <laughs> I can and keep you can secret. barely keep your dick in your pants. <laughs> I'm not convinced you were gonna keep uh, a world-changing uh, technological achievement. You have no idea. Secret. You have no idea what secrets I've kept for you. Sure. Sure, be vague, and I'll just be a uh, faker. We have other things to do right now. Do. Sam. I'd like a deception check. Deception. 32. Oh! Oh my god! god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Wow. You rolled like a two on the dice. Here's what I'd like to do now. Hold on one second. Luis, yes. give me an insight check. Oh god. Mm. Remember, I Ten. have my ring as well. Oh shit, everyone's got stuff to know stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> everyone's got stuff to know stuff. Deception check, uh, this deception check was not necessarily f for a lie, cool. but rather just for something else. You, um, I will say this too, at the Ivy table, uh, Sarah, you see the hallway that leads off to that like small chamber where that body was left. Um, as you guys begin to put the pieces of this all together, it's very challenging because there's so much going on in the replenishment, even under the best of circumstances. With the addition of these, you know, Sir Ilarez's dream, with the completion of the astral lay right, and the finding that like this, this against all odds, this apogee solstice, this particular convening of the spheres would see the possibility of 
a shift in the ley lines themselves make the impossible possible for one precious moment. There is the matter of this body. infernal body in the other room of Vespin Chloris, yes. the connection with the strange dream, the arrival of Pervon, all of this is leading up to something. Um, and then there are other things that haven't yet had a piece of yarn put to them yet. The shuddering of the Hall of Prophecy, uh, strange you know, Milas friend showing up and asking for a favor that shouldn't have known about it. Now, uh, uh, the the Ring of Silver taking an active interest in this case. Avalor is a big city. There's a lot going on uh, that's a problem, even without all being a conspiracy. But there is much at stake here. Um, as the six of you sit at this table, coming into an awareness both of this revelation and then this very disturbing new information, uh, you have time, as strange as that sounds. The apogee solstice will occur tomorrow. It's it, Whatever you're going to do needs to happen within the next 24 hours. That's your window of opportunity. And again, if you miss that, it's important to say, if you miss that window, it doesn't mean it never happens. It just means that it goes back from being possible to theoretical. Jeez, oh, in 24 hours? 24 hours. Possible to theoretical. Bryn? Yeah. I, I was just going to say, do I, would I know just from my history with the library behind me any more strange instances on when the ley lines and the planes are this closely aligned? Give me, um,. Uh, give me a history check with advantage. With advantage. Oh, fuck, I just fucked my knee. Oh, no. That's what that sound was. What's, what's that? It's just pure death and rage just, right now in your head. Hit, uh, hit the edge of the table. Rage. 22! <laughs> <laughs> you remember the first time someone explained apogee solstices to you? It's a woman that you knew as a child. Uh, you don't remember her name anymore because nobody does. Oh my god. god you are wow. fucking kidding me. You <laughs> learned it from that's her? That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We learned it from watching you, Mom. <laughs> um, Mom? 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 Um, Shh. No. <laughs> a beautiful woman with raven hair who was one of the greatest wizards you ever met once told you. What was possible on a given apogee solstice? Sure. Um, the the last time these solstices, uh, there was a, there was an apogee solstice. Uh, there was some shifting of the ley lines of Exandria. Um, ley lines again for those here. I think you would all know this. They 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 move around the meridian of Exandria. They, they are terrestrial by nature. They're the lifeblood of the magic of the world. To create a, and even hearing the name of the engine, an astral lay rite, something that could take something truly of the world and move it to another dimension. But you, it all comes together when Laren's talking about what's possible because at an apogee solstice, if the ley lines are shifting, Anything's possible. Anything's possible. The woman who told it to you mentioned it because there was a, she said she was working on something that in a few years' time might become possible. Apogee solstices occur about every 120 years. 20 years, okay. Well, it seems we need to come to a consensus with regard to what is important and what needs to be done and what of course we can uh, move to in uh, it, when when we feel comfortable and have time to do so um, the Vespin Chloris situation seems is of course upsetting but uh, I'm not in incredibly sure or clear on what we can do about it sure I I can see that position. My concern, again, only looking on the outside from the knowledge that you've gleaned, is that the timing of it, this person trying to replicate what the Matron of Ravens was trying to do, 
and you creating a device that is taking advantage of this lay right. Let I would be clear, I made the lay right. The I'm, lay taking a, I'm taking advantage of the, the solstice. solstice, yes. Thank you. Right. I mean, that. I listen. <laughs> that. Uh, uh, I'll also have a small nitpick here for Loquacious and Xerxes. Uh-huh. As, uh, as Sarah has just said, re- Vespin recreated the Matron's ritual. You know that's not true. He didn't recreate No, the oh, yes. yes. Yeah. It's a slightly different ritual. Right. But ritually. Yeah, ritually. Say, yeah. There's, this is the time for for people to make something happen, and we cannot be foolish enough to think that you're the only person that had the idea to, at this very time, take advantage of the magical energy, energies and, and and the thin veil between these realities. Mm-hmm. Others are doing that as well, and we've been warned about Vespin and what he's done, and we know that it has to do with the betrayers. I want to celebrate as, as much as the two of you, but I also don't want your moment to be spoiled because we have been unawares of interested parties coming in and taking this out from underneath both of you. And they're coming. They tried to take you out. They're here. Okay. okay. So we know that something is amiss, and we know that something is coming for us, and we know that other cities are creating weapons, and I congratulate you for your beautiful achievement, and I share that ambition and that wonder about those planes and that exploration. But I'm put off by this so-called champion of the Matron of Ravens, who's come here to warn us and couldn't even utter the words of the betrayers, because he was scared. And that is precisely why I kneel to no god. Because the second you kneel to one of them, you kneel to them all. Something is here, it wants to threaten us, but we are the ring of brass. So gather your wits, gather your courage, gather your strength, and do the job that you know you need to do because this city needs us. Xerxes, can I implore you to set a guard outside of this room, and can I show the rest of the Ring of Brass this room? And as you so say you... that, Xerxes is continuing this like <laughs> monologue, and you can start to feel it. <laughs> you start to feel his blood boiling, and all of a sudden, each one of you starts to feel almost a simmering of your own blood, as if it starts to like, if passion and rage could be contagious, which I believe it absolutely is, you're starting to feel it invade you and start to simmer and like make your blood boil, and then it expands out of you a little bit, and you see this like cosmic dust start to swirl around you as you gain 19 temporary hit points. Oh. I'd like to use this as oh my, my inspiring, inspiring leader, leader, baby! Yay. That is crazy. almost, uh, that is uh, Something's upon us. 14 temp HP amongst wow. six people. And if it's coming, I say <laughs> let it come. <laughs> you were saying, sir. I would like. True first night. <laughs> I would like to get your eyes on this room, the body. You have the knowledge of the arcane that I do not. And I would like to also go back to my offices at Cloudstone re-examine Vespin's room, his items, see if there was anything else that we missed, and maybe I can bring those items to you. not just the bow, but perhaps something we didn't pay close enough attention to. Okay. I'll help you however I can. Uh, can I lead them over to, yeah. the, to the room and you, ask for a You guard? go to the room. Um, uh, you guys can absolutely just get a guard post at this room, but, you okay. know. Pesha has people that, that can be posted up. You guys enter into the room, See this dead body. See the cracked mirror. Um, I'm gonna let you may roll Arcana. You may roll History. You may roll Perception, Investigation, whatever you want to roll. The best results will come from a Religion check. Mm. Cool. A plus three. Is this all of us? <laughs> all of you. You're all in the room. You can all. Look. Also, just saying, handled handled that with a you know with just a melee weapon. I didn't, didn't need any. <laughs> I just rolled a natural 20 for my religion check. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh! oh my god! Wow. That's a religion! Go! 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 Do the rest of us need to roll anything? Yeah, I know. Can we just close our eyes? Can we just close our eyes? Can 
Can we coast on that nat 20? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Let's yeah. run yeah. it down. <laughs> um, Save uh, the rules. I just want to admire the like wet work, like, ooh. Ah. <laughs> right across the neck. Um, uh, a million percent. Um, mm. So. Oh God, oh God, fire. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God no. Oh God, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Too tired. So, you all enter the room. Everyone starts looking. There's stuff to glean here. You can read some of this infernal. The mages of this place can find different stuff. Xerxes. Orange irises. Bloodshot eyes. <laughs> you look into the eyes of a dead man. Runes everywhere. You hear in your mind. It's not a comforting feeling. Nobody likes to feel like they're dreaming when they're wide awake. see the infernal on his body and you see the exposed injury. You're a healer, you I know. Am. You know how you have lay on hands, you know I'm, what it, you're one, yes. you're one of the people here that can cure disease. So you know that if this man was still alive, that his body would be riddled with tumorous growths all throughout. And they're coming from the things that he has carved into his flesh infernal runes. Clerics have fallen out of vogue here in Avalir. What does it mean to draw power from a deity? It's complicated. What is the clerical version of a wizard study? We all know that clerics draw their power from their gods but if the gods want power, why wouldn't they just grant their most powerful spells to any and all of their followers? Why are some clerics stronger than others? It's not arcana, it's not history, it's, it's their wisdom. As clerics grow in a deeper understanding of the facet of reality manifested by their deity, they become more aware and attuned to those forces within the world and can wield greater magics. There is a limit to what is safe to grant a follower. But now, what if you weren't worried about keeping your followers safe? You look into this man's eyes and a term floods into your mind. It's a term in infernal, it means puppet. It's a human so devoted to you that it's not even worth magically dominating them or charming them anymore. They just let you into their soul. And the word is knauf. It's a word that hasn't been spoken on Exandria since the foundations of this world. The man you are looking at became a cleric of a betrayer. And he became a cleric of a betrayer looking at the speed of these growths maybe a little over two weeks ago. What would you do if you came back to the world after a long time away and nobody worshipped you, and you needed to make some moves real quick. The, this is a mortal man that was forced to understand things that he was not ready for, because 
His master didn't need a servant. He just needed a puppet. Uh, as, as, as Xerxes is processing all of this and, and seeing the wasted person devoted to who he was following and consumed by that devotion that was taken advantage of, he, he just kneels and traces the wounds with his finger and just spends a moment on those tumors and takes a closer look. Is there anything about that? No, nothing is more familiar to me beyond what's been described. I've not seen this like this before. This is all unfamiliar. I'm going to point out the runes to those that are of an ar arcane understanding. I don't know if it's worth copying them down or understanding them better, but this is this is what I see has happened here, and I explained to them what I saw. I've already copied them down, and you see mm -hmm. kind of like thin, yes, <laughs> thin, like wisps of light kind of pour out of the runes and into the orb that is constantly floating around Pesha. Mm. Very troubling. Two weeks ago was when Vespin Chloris attempted his ritual, correct? So you could? Correct. He succeeded. We need to proceed as though he was successful. He was successful. But he you. succeeded with what? Bringing. To what? what? Not ascending. No. Bringing back. Some sort of betrayer god. They yes. They were locked away. I don't even know. What the betrayer gods are? Do we do we have a, a running tally of, of these fellows? Yes. What are they for us? Are they they they're, they're like they're betrayers? Yeah, they're just like a, a like they're not here. from history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. from history. From well, they've like, been sealed away. Okay, great. The, the I mean, you live in an age where the prime deities walk Exandria openly, and mm -hmm. their brethren. I mean, the schism is your creation myth. They're not creation myth, but but the the, the myth following the creation. Mm -hmm. You you know that what happened was a there was a time in which the prime deities in a world of strife and chaos sought to give divine magic to their children, to mortals. And the primordials that had existed in the world, the elemental titans that had existed in the world prior to the arrival of the deities, who before the schism, there was not a distinction between prime deity and betrayer. No betrayal had happened. There were just the gods and the primordials. The gods fractured when uh, divine magic was granted to mortals. The primordials rose up to correct that imbalance, and the betrayers joined the primordials against the cause of mortals. In an effort to rule out the hope that Vespin did not somehow manually manipulate access for a betrayer god, uh, do we know in history, are there any instances of one of these gods breaking through into this plane, even if for a short time before being pushed back? back. One, a single, an instance, an incursion. I'm going to improvise an important piece of canon right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. No. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or so much so that it's rare. The prime right. deities were so were so thorough in sealing the betrayer gods away that the betrayer gods were not able to grant spells. The betrayer gods, Yo. the worship of them was completely fruitless. Yeah, nothing. You got nothing, even if you wanted to. Uh, there's one more thing I want to do with this body. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna trace again with my finger the runes. Mm -hmm. And as I'm touching it, <laughs> I'm gonna on occasion <laughs> infuse it with divine energy. I'm gonna just spend a point of lay on hands on occasion, not to heal the body, yeah. but to connect. What are you worried about? You're down there making hands. Um, <laughs> as I trace all of those runes. You connect. 
I don't know what it means for someone to become as lost as this man was to do what he did, to seek for who he sought for. But you're a man with a lot of questions. And I think that you understand what it's like to feel lost. The eyes close, and this body, at least, knows more rest now than it did in life. Have a moment. Gross. I am of two minds. Uh, if we are amongst ourselves to admit that a Vespin Chloris succeeded in uh, interacting with a betrayer god, um, it seems fitting that we either confirm uh, this possibility by revisiting your reconstructed site, or we seek out some greater understanding of Xerxes's dreams by finding a prophet or better understanding what is going on with the Hall of Prophecy. Yes, I agree. Um, I admit I am not wholly ready to give myself over to this idea um, and would like to better understand what is um, what exactly we are potentially dealing with before we start making decisions from a place of truth. Well, just one, I, you know, I don't have opinions, I just report. Um, <laughs> but but uh, just a, the a theory to toss out, as, as you were talking, and, and you were talking, uh, it's just a wild theory, it could be possibly totally wrong, but uh, the betrayer gods can't come through. They're locked out. Can't, can't, they can't get in here. They're stuck out, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and we know that uh, this lady became the matron of ravens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, and Vespin did the same thing. So, the, the, this betrayer god that Vespin has awoken, or whatever, wouldn't have to make the journey from uh, lands beyond to get here, because Vespin would be the betrayer god. He, he would be here already. Doesn't have to go through any gate or anything, because he's gone through this ritual that makes him a god. It's possible. We would know. We would know if he had ascended, though. We knew when the Matron of Ravens. How did we know? Thought we had a feeling. We were like, in, in <laughs> the, oh, uh, in one the, more. In, <laughs> the, in the blink of an eye, anyone who was standing in a temple to the previous god of death watched all of the names of that god be erased from the stone in front of them at the moment of her ascension. But there is no knowing of the betrayer god, so there would be no one who knew if they changed. Yeah. Except here we have evidence of someone who was drawing upon their power and was receiving it, so the line of that is established here. Loquacious, you're the one extra planar person here. Give me an insight check. On myself, I'm self inciting. No, I think you're. I think you're inciting the world. Ooh. I fucking love inciting the world. <laughs> uh, a twenty-two, but if I fail, I can add a d four. <laughs> I love the offer every, every time. There yeah, you go. If I fail, roll roll a d. You won't fail because you're on you're on a gradient. So roll the d four for me. Hit that. Okay, t twenty-four. Twenty-four. Um, you're sitting here, you're talking about like, did this ritual work or not, right? Um, yeah. All of your friends, you have, you have powerful friends here in this room who um, have very specific functions within the city. Um, right now, you're, for being not human, you're thinking about human nature. You're thinking about the nature of all beings. The gods are impossible to fathom, sure, but if they have wars, if they squabble and bicker with each other, how inhuman can they be? If there is a puppet here, it's indicative of a conspiracy, and a conspiracy exists to accomplish something that has not happened yet. 
So I think that when you're saying like the ritual, something happened, I think on that insight, that powerful insight check, you're pulling on the right thread. Something happened, perhaps something terrible, but the apocalypse, if the apocalypse happened, you'd notice it. Something is at work, but not finished. Mm. That is what your opinion is. As you try to put the pieces together, Sarah is right. A, an infernal cultist came to the palace of the Keeper of Scrolls in Avalir. But that cultist came to do something, which means that something needed to happen. As he is saying that. Charmingly. Charmingly. A lot <laughs> snaps into place for Pesha as well. How the fuck did this motherfucker get in? Yeah. <laughs> is there like something I can do to like check? How did he, br I'm assuming that I would have so many things set up in terms of like, you warning know, signs. warning signs, yeah. breach points, zones of truth, you name it. You have divining stones. Divining you, stones. You, go, you go back through, through a divining stone effortlessly uh, and look through. Um, yeah. Uh, looking at my smart home. Looking at your smart yeah. home. iPad. Just on the nest. Yes. Just on the nest. Yeah, I'm looking at all the, <laughs> the ring cams. Yeah, right. Uh, Ahadmadad walked down this hallway. It was not in the livery of the Golden Scythe. It walked down. It walked down this hallway, and never came back out. It never came back for the whole party up to this current moment as you're recording. You do a quick scan of the hallway, there's no Hadmadot anywhere, but you see just the corner from where one of your divine students can catch it, the Hadmadot opening the door to this room. Right. And that Hadmadot had come as a porter carrying a gift of Dean Lycretia Hollow. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the walk sign is on. <laughs> carrying a gift of Dean. Wait. Uh, just, so when Lycretia like, Hollow showed up, she had a Hadmadad with her carrying yes. a gift. That Hadmadad put the gift down, and being a Hadmadad that no one would care to follow or look at that Keep much, going. wandered, boop, 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 wandered boop, 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 off, walked into this room, and that's the last you see of it, and you're in this room, and it's mm -hmm. not in here. But there was an invisible cultist in here, and that was the one because I caught out of the corner of my eye when I was doing my um, like detect thoughts, and it went. Poof. No, different one. That different one's one. that one's still disanimated. That one's disanimated. If invisibility is a second level spell, and disguise self is a first level spell, yeah. that cultist was disguised as a Hadmadad and walked in here, and then when he got into the room, cast invisibility on himself and was waiting for the right moment. But the right moment never came because he got his throat slit by the senior site warden. Wow. We got got by cantrips, maybe. <laughs> got caught by cantrips. <laughs> oh, you hate to see Fundamentals, it. you guys. Fundamentals. <laughs> wow. So they have hollow. Been fundamental. Ho Dean yes. Just think about all the shit you've gotten Dean away hollow. with as third level characters. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's under Pacia's list. Where <laughs> is Dean Hollow? Where is? So I'm gonna go over. The necromancy, art mage, or the ring of silver? Yes, I'm gonna go. go. She was one who brought in. Um, um, she came with. Um, Pervon. 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 Yeah. Um, or she had invited Pervon yes. and then openly mocked him in the, in sort of like in the. This we, what, wild. Wild. And we all applauded. Because it was pretty dope. It was it's pretty some dope. solid dogs. All right. <laughs> all right. I, I'm going to go over. Um, I'm imagining this room, I'm adding shit to canon as we go, has like one of those like big panorama windows um, like CEOs have in their like upstairs offices Ooh, looking over their warehouse, looking at their like, you know, worker minions. Um, <laughs> I, have, I imagine I have that in um, that the house and I'm, I'm looking over down into the foyer area. Can I see, can I clock Dean? You see, um, uh, there was a woman, Madara Glyph was talking with her all night, but you don't see like Risha Hollow anywhere here. Mm. Well, we can go talk to who was talking to her and ask where she went. How does our telepathic link work? Any of us can jump in and send a message, or just you can hit any of us? 
Oh, yeah, I'll bring that shit back up. Rare is telepathic mm-hmm. bond. Cool. Mm-hmm. Everyone can talk to everyone and you can like sell right. silent distance. Distance. Just I'm just over any distance. Yeah. Any, any distance. distance. It's a good yeah. spell. It's a really that good spell. That's, is that an hour or is that more than that? It's an hour, but I can ritually cast it again and again and again. Solid. Okay. Let's maybe keep that up. So wait, okay. And, and only take this is above the table, Marisha <laughs> talking to DM. The one that I saw, the Hamadad, that went boof. That, that, just that was one of, doctor. that was a different one. That was yeah. one of Nidus's. Um, uh, so basically uh, what happened is that one disanimated for reasons you still don't understand, but you heard that one saying Gordranus over and over again. Um, this was right. an, a private one of Lycretia's, and that's putting that together in your head, you're like, now you don't know if Lycretia knew or not, but a Hadmadad in her employ walked in with a gift, put the gift on the table, walked down a hallway without being ordered to, opened a door, let itself in a room. Where's the gift? Yeah. Where's the gift? What gift Ooh, where's did she bring? Where's the receiving room? Yeah, where's this? Is there a big table with gifts? Is there a registry? <laughs> like a wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought you a curate. Well, we need to go <laughs> see if that gift is no. an actual <laughs> gift or if it's something that's going to go boom. I made a donation on your behalf. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. <laughs> I also don't think it's important, but I, I point out to Nidus the, the core yeah, of the yeah, Hobbit that just has the, that the glyph that looks um, like it's missing. You don't put your proprietary technology, you have a technology that <laughs> ha- keeps their engines in the... We keep the engines, uh, the energy is stored at the scythe and fed out. I learn more every day. <laughs> How um, difficult we... is it, Nidus, to tamper with one of your Hadmadats. Someone would have to be in the guild hall. Someone would have to be in the guild hall. <laughs> but I mean, once again, just the coincidences, which <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. <laughs> we just had this um, little infiltrator. Yes, we must and the Sphinx. The guild hall is oh. relatively empty. It, it was not the Sphinx who did majestically during the Parade of Peace. Um, the guild hall is relatively empty at this current time, but I was just there uh, before uh, meeting up with Laren, and uh, my man, Alexander, is there. Um, and had did not mention any sort of tampering or the like. Let's go find this gift. Yes. Let's go find this hollow. Great. And see what we can see. And save. go from there. All right. And uh, incredible. Um, there is much that you have all discussed doing. Finding hollow, finding the gift. You have mentioned the Hall of Prophecy yes. is returning to Cloudstone. There is much to do in precious little time. I know. As all of you stand from your seats at the ivy table, outside, you hear. Oh, no! The fireworks extravaganza has begun. The fireworks extravaganza! The extravaganza started! So we're gonna take our break, folks. We'll uh, oh, come back after the like break. This. <laughs> this mini series is too stressful. I'm canceling it. <laughs> <laughs> what about our museum curator, Heitroga? Yeah. yeah, his would be like quintessential boomer Twitter, where it's like not quite done right. <laughs> it's just like a, a picture of him from like high school. This is the deepest lore. <laughs> <laughs> Were you close with anybody in the Nobodies? All of them. No, I mean like close. All of them. No. Hi, <laughs> 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 you're weird. You're not though. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Yeah, let's see what happens. Let's, oh, oh, what the fuck? Oh, this is it, fellas. <laughs> hey, critters. Laura Bailey here to guide you through what's new in the Critical Role Shop. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Could anything be more perfect? Style should never be a dumpster, darling. Look at this, isn't it fashion? So much fashion happening here. Oh, so comfy cozy. 
if you want, you could head over to the Critical Role shop right now. We now go live to a special address from the president. Hey dweebs, now as your president, I've been kinda killing it lately. I gave global warming an atomic wedgie, I balanced the budget by selling my pog collection, and I saved the Queen of England from that octopus. But my kick-assery is far from done. According to this chart that I made, an estimated 35% of you are still a bunch of nasty goobers. But don't worry, I have a plan. Operation Gag Me with a Spoon. It's easy sleazy. According to the study that I wrote, if every citizen subscribed to Critical Role on Twitch, we could reduce maximum goobage by a metric buttload. Twitch is the only place well, you'll get a live and moderated chat. And if you subscribe to Critical Role, you instantly get access to all their shows as soon as the live broadcast ends. So while you're oogling these Critical Role dorks with their sick goof em ups and their nutty voices, think of me, Gail, the current president of whatever. Now I gotta go make a fresh batch of spitballs, but I guess I have some time for your boring questions. You. Gail, is it true that if you subscribe to Critical Role through Prime Gaming, you have to resubscribe every month? Uh, yeah. I do it right after my monthly prank call to pee on O'Brien. Next question. Does Critical Role have exclusive emotes for their subscribers? Uh, do we? Of course they do. I like the Hello Bees one, because bees are cool. I replace my whole security detail with a bunch of bees that think I'm their queen. Last question. Yeah, with all due respect, is Operation Gag Me with a Spoon a real policy, or are you mad goofing? <gasps> Am I mad goofing? What, do you see me scarfing milk duds while doodling ding-dongs on the Sky Mall catalog? Listen, I know I'm new to this, and I admit that when I made the wish to be the boss of everything, I did not know the witch that works at Woolworths was listening. But Faustian bargain or not, I am the president now and I have an obligation to lead this country. So to answer your question, no, I am not mad goofing. Security, take him out. <laughs> Later, Chud Ruckers.
Ashley snaps tax evasion. <laughs> we had to have caught it on camera. It was so late. It was so late in the game. <laughs> Folks, we're coming back to Xandria Unlimited Calamity after the break. Um, we return now to the Palazzo Porco, uh, where the Ring of Brass stands up from the ivy table. Uh, I love it. Uh, I think it's great. Um, uh, you stand. Uh, there is much to do. Uh, uh, many of the cards held by those assembled here are now on the table. The astral lay right is functional, and it has one chance and one chance alone to work, and that is today. And the ritual of the Archmage Vespin Chloris appears to have done something terrible. Um, you stand up from this place. You want to investigate the gift of Dean Hollow, like Risha Hollow. Yes, yes. I think me and Lairin are tagging along. Yep. And uh, quick stop at the gift table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, long, beautifully wrapped gift, very stylish, uh, as is the fashion for necromancers. It's a velvet black box yes. with a sort of lovely yes. black ribbon on it. Um, the most goth of The most goth presents. of gifts. <laughs> uh, it's quite long, it's quite elongated. Uh, you open it up and you see there's a small. Is it trapped? Is it a bomb? Is it anything like that? You don't detect any magic on it at all. No magic, okay. But your cousin is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you detect no magic on it whatsoever. Um, you open it up for this enormous box. You see there's like a velvet raised stand that's the whole length of the box, and in the center, in a sort of depression shaped for it, there's a small vial of a clear liquid. Very, It's quite small, like, you know, uh, less than a mouthful. Um, and there's a note attached to it. Read it. Um, the note says, when the time comes, this will be the easier way out. All things end. <gasps> Lives, stories, even ages. Oh. Do, 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 do what? You, do you read that out loud? Because I am for sure like opening other gifts. I don't read it out loud. That's why not. I fold it, and I just make eye contact with Lairin. We have enough of a bond yeah. that you just see me look at you. Necromancers have such a penchant for the dramatic. So poetic. We should have a conversation. Mm hmm. Um, anyone who wants to give me a medicine check. It's Natural 20. Let's go. Oh, the oh, reason, girl's got it. Uh, the, re the reason you did not uh, detect magic is that the faintly sweet. Uh, incredibly deadly poison within the vial is not magical. We need to have a conversation. And I'm going to drop the vial. Drop it? <gasps> yeah, so it shatters. Oh, okay. Well, what if it's like aroma activated? <laughs> <laughs> then we all die here, baby. And it smells like juicy fruit. 50 foot square foot. <laughs> 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 I was just being mad at God. Holy shit. I immediately turn uh, with the freshly shattered glass behind me. Yeah. Thanks to Laren, badass. And I scan, do I see Lycratia Hollow at all? Probably not. No um, role necessary, you do not see Lycratia Hollow. You you see um, uh, Madara Glyph, who was speaking to her earlier, which you know is the Valedictine after your underling at the yeah. Abjuration Guild. I immediately uh, just bring the orb, uh, my orb, in front of me, and it kind of widens a little bit, scrying. I'm looking for that bitch. Let's go. Um, you get your orb and scry. Most people wouldn't recognize what this is, but as someone who has a ring of mind shielding, you know She's exactly what it is. Okay. I should have known that we all Didn't have those. Didn't the mind shielding rings before the party started. Everyone's got one. Look, I'm not gonna, <laughs> this one isn't a key party, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Everyone drop your mind shielding. It's not fair to protect oh. your mind. Yes, that, man. Put it in the fishbowl. <laughs> You'll have a better experience if you don't. Um, all right. Yeah, she's currently missing in action. Do we think Madara has any information? She's your assistant. You tell me. I don't pay attention to people dumber than me. <laughs> that is incredibly fair. <laughs> Let's go talk to her. Um, Madara is uh, standing there going like, it's of course love, I mean, the last, and sees both of you walking straight towards her, and you see she like swallows a full gulp of air into her stomach, just like, in just at both of your power and station, and goes, Ah, mm, keep back, uh, Kavika Starkane. Hello. Follow me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, if you lead. I'm gonna like be behind her in just the most stressful yep. sandwich she's ever been in. She, mm -hmm. she yes. follows and says, <laughs> "You go to like a little private corner. Mm -hmm. Whatever." We to don't it. need to make small talk. Yep. <sighs> Where's the Grisha Hollow? Ah, so <sighs> I'm sweating. Huh. I do a little cantrip gust to cool she her down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says, like, Lucia Hollow. Oh, uh, the dean uh, was speaking to me. Um, she was uh, speaking to me earlier, uh, prior to Sir Illares uh, coming over, uh, that she had um, invited uh, the champion uh, Per Van Sool, uh, to the gathering. Um, which I thought very strange because she then quite grievously, you know, um, uh, made made the guest uh, uncomfortable, uh, which is fine. I, I agree that you know the age of the gods is over, uh, but um, uh, I think she wanted to make apologies to him because I saw her uh, whisper to um, Magister uh, Magister Cormorant and say that she was uh, going to follow him, um, and then I. Uh, then I saw, well, what did I see? Uh, give me an arcana check. Um, oh, no. I just want to oh, assist no. you on this. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Mm -hmm. What is she trying to do? What are you doing, Maybe bitch? You yeah. <laughs> Have done to her. 25. 25? Um, uh, 25 uh, lets you know that you should be casting Detect Thoughts right now. That, okay, <clears throat> that's, uh, yeah, Detect Thoughts. Let's do it. Um, as she goes there, um, Leave it to, well, it's hard to tell who cast it, but you know it wasn't an enchanter, because this modify memory was sloppy, and it was done very fast. Uh. Um, uh, Madara saw Lycretia cast a spell, and neither Lycretia or somebody else quickly, in the midst of a party, modified her memory to forget it. To for, uh, but you see, she says, yes, I think Lycretia wanted to apologize to to the champion, Pervan. I probe deeper, detect thoughts, I'll uh, have a fuck right now. She on a knows. On a 25, you burrow deeper into the memory, and you get to a memory that Madara can no longer access. Um, you see Lycretia go invisible <laughs> uh, to follow Pervan out of the room, and you see Magister Cormorant turn. Um, who was also one of the people speaking, and you see Cormorant says, oh, <laughs> Valedictine, can I speak with you for a moment and put a hand on her neck and begin to tap a somatic component to a modify memory spell? Wow. Uh, on her neck. Wow. Uh, as she goes in, you look at Madara's eyes looking out, and you see in her memory a bit of magic a spell, some kind of dangerous spell, something crackling, something that, that you recognize is about to break invisibility. Like, the, the invisibility that Lycretia cast on herself was low level, the kind of thing that an attack or a spell gets rid of, right? Uh, the invisibility was about to fade because Lycretia was about to do something deadly, and then you see and hear Pervon as Loquacious and Xerxes run out. And because they ran out, Lycretia killed Stops. the spouse. Damn, they were gonna take wow. a shot. I saved someone's life today. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> don't tell him. <laughs> Please don't tell him. I was there too, and I said champion, which stopped him. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and then you watch as Lycretia 
uh, in the memory, well, now, now you're past the memory, but you remember the interaction that Xerxes and Qua Loquacious described, which was their presence in front of Pervon Sul up until the moment that he vanished because they did not leave his side until he teleported away from the city. You guys changed canon. <laughs> you guys saved the future of Exandria. We were the heroes. <laughs> no one tell them. It's been a great mini campaign. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we played nice. for, right? <laughs> Um, so Madara is standing in front of you and goes, um, "Sorry, I can't. I, I can't be more helpful. But, but I, I then there was a moment, and then Magister Cormorant became some quite quite distracted once again in her memories. You see, uh, Still, yeah. you see Madara speaking, and Cormorant literally reacts like someone tapped his shoulder, but you didn't see anyone tap his shoulder. Uh, and you see that uh, it's like, and then he he left." Quite abruptly as well, the Magister. I, I believe he he said he said something about having to uh, attend to uh, some business uh, in his his offices, which is strange. Is on an evening such as this, a wonderful gathering, a party. Um, uh, but you know. Uh, Magister Cormorant is free to do as as he wishes. Ha have I done anything to give offense or or, or anything? Uh, not knowing what you're discovering, uh, you definitely see Lairin about to like rip into her. Because <laughs> I have no idea. I just think she's incompetent. Like, well, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I've been getting drunk uh, huh. at a party, and there's something bigger happening. What, what is your whole deal? What is the point of you? Valedictine, you are a representative of the Abjura, and I, I find, frankly, all of your behavior tonight specifically to be sobby. Go home, Madara. Oh. Mm. I, I am very sorry. Happy have... replenishment. She wordlessly turns and walks out of here. So why did we let her leave and not uh, take her to the Magisters? I've got everything I need to know. Mm. Magister Comerant okay, cool. are a part of this. Um, he seems to be in cahoots, as they say, with the Dean. And I take the sphere in front of my face in between me and Lairin, and you just see kind of like a projection in the sphere of the memory that I pulled from her her mind and play it back. I might have to admit that I was needlessly harsh to a subordinate. Mm -hmm. No. Her dress was atrocious. Did you see that? It was bad. And honestly, if you can get a modify memory uh, it's cast on you, like what kind of wizard are you anyway? She should be more careful. Truly. She deserves the night off. Uh. You guys Give me. Can make up with her tomorrow, I'm sure. Give me a uh, give me a perception check with advantage. <laughs> Call it a DC fifteen. Oh, oh. Well, both bad. All that's bad. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah. Oopie. Cool. Man. Um, Two and a five. Uh, uh, so you have what you. <laughs> You have what you have. Uh, you have what you have from from Madara. Um, uh, the rest of the Ring of Brass. Um, uh, so you've looked at the gift. You've talked to Madara. You, the the party, moves on. But time is of the essence. It's getting closer to midnight. I I do jump on to our walkie talkies and um, inform everybody. Magister Cormorant. Cormorant has something to do with this, and word on the street is he can be found in his offices. I, I'm right across the lobby from you. I can see. Hi, I'm over here. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, wait, you're still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Where are you doing anywhere. something? Else um, <laughs> but uh, do you are you going to go do that? Are you going to go take care of that Cormorant thing? I would love to go to the Magisterium. I'm. Uh, Tapping into our group chat. 
through yeah. the telepathic bond. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, because right. you, you downloaded that into Everyone our, can hear this. Great. Yes. So what's our next move? We're about to go. Th- we were planning on heading to the Hall of Prophecy uh, to uh, see if we might consult with regard to uh, Xerxes' visions. Isn't it closed? We're going to see if we can open it. Okay. And if not, uh, I had intentions of scrying on one of the one of the prophets uh, or the oracles I might be familiar with that we might just go to them directly. Good. I was going to go check out uh, my records on uh, Vespin Vespin Chloris just to see if we could glean any more historical information about him. Is right. any, are you coming with, or you're going to go to your place? One hundred percent knowledge is the key. I feel like the more we can learn about the man before whatever he did took place, it may serve as well. So I'm off to the to the tome, to the Herald's tome. Mm. All of you head off. Um, the Hall of Prophecy, the Herald's tome, <laughs> the Magisterium, uh, the Ring of Brass <laughs> on a night where you should have been uh, be reveling drunk. till sunrise. You should be, be drunk. drunk. Hey, um, there's only six people in this town who work, and you're looking at them. You have, uh, <laughs> so, you have a Xerox uh, machine at the Herald's Tome, right? We can, yeah, 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 we can get yeah, into yeah, some we trouble. We can't say that, that word Xerox. It's copyrighted. But, oh. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> we have a photocopy. Photocopy. <laughs> <laughs> and Cormorant would be at the magis- Magisterium, yeah, or would where, he be at the library? That's where he was going there, okay. right? Yeah, he said he was going to his offices. Um, speaker of the Fourth. Yes, Speaker okay. of the Fourth. Um, uh, cool. Um, you head off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Um, uh, oh, this is. You know what? I'll, I'll say here. I'm going to roll one, two, three, four, five, six. See who we cut to? I know. Back to back. Back to back. Um, incredible. Uh, we are, uh, we're going to follow you guys to the Herald's Tone. Um, okay. so, um, Did you roll a five or a six? I rolled a six. Uh, I have, I would assume, uh, records at, at the uh, Herald's Tome of any notable figures. Um, we we uh, keep uh, records and also recordings, audio and, and uh, visual of uh, notable people from around the world, in case we need to use them in, in upcoming uh, stories. Um, uh, but also, sometimes we pre-record uh, stories that might might not be time sensitive. Uh, so, uh, I, I, with your blessing, <laughs> Brennan, I, I, I bring him to the room where we keep all of these sort of pre-recorded crystal shards that have um, these messages and information on them. Nobody's here, though, because everyone's out partying, so I'm trying to make my way and, and figure out uh, w- w- the filing system. I haven't done this in years. Usually I have assistants who do this for me. And so I, I pick up uh, one thing and put it in, and, and it says, uh, it's a recording of me saying, uh, it is with a heavy heart that I must report the death of Eldamir the Wise. <laughs> His reign was long, and he was a high, and then I t- take it out. Ah. And <sighs> that will be run someday, obviously. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, and then I, I stick in something else, and it's a pre-recorded uh, advertisement. Come to Mulligan's Tavern, uh, the the third best ale in Avalier, but the first best for making friends. And I take it out. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a drink, so that actually is that works for me. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking. I'm looking for anything that I can find on. Yeah. So on this man. As you guys walk in, you again have this this incredible chamber. It's a circular chamber with all these crystals stored throughout. These like beautiful. Everything in here is like gold and brass, and there are a bunch of little stands that t- make the sort of like project three-dimensional illusory recordings. I mean, this is a whole group of bards that work at the town. Illusion magic is second nature, so it's th- these amazing recordings. Um, let me ask this. Uh, uh, as you get here, you have so much stuff. Um, I will ask for either history checks or investigation checks. As you walk in, it's also the sort of strange, like, um, there's a little bit of a being in the Herald's Tome at night. Empty cubicles, empty workspaces, and the lights are all off. You're inside and... I would also just say out of, out of habit, I do my normal 
thing, which is to investigate a space, look for things that may not be there, use the unerring eye, um, mm. and just check it because it's after hours, but also if we're on a specific trail, who knows? Who might else be? <laughs> yeah. Certainly, please look around. I, I must admit, I have been here on occasion after hours, sometimes accompanied with you know, Make other, it a other, private other chat. People. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow! God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, like peaks. <laughs> Somehow they yeah. like the tone. Yeah. Um, can you mute your microphones, <laughs> please? Thank you. But uh, yes, yeah, so there could be some people wandering about or finding hard surfaces to, <laughs> you know, lay lay down on hard or something. Hard surfaces. Yeah. Uh, just for the the room and the space, yeah, anything right. that might be there or or uh, visual or non visual. Uh, Twenty three investigation. Mm. Ooh, my history is terrible. Uh, it's only a nine. Cool. Um, you're looking through, and but I can roll that d4. <laughs> yeah, roll the d4. That's cock. Oh, it added four. That's a thirteen. Thirteen. Um, you start pulling, um, a lot of stuff. I'm gonna say on that investigation check, you grab a bunch. So we're gonna go with that very high investigation check. So history, you're having a hard time remembering stuff. So with that investigation, you basically just pull everything. It's like, okay, we can't narrow this down. We got to pull it all. So we're gonna be here for a minute. You know, like running through it. Um, as you do, you also find something that's not about Vespin Chloris at all, but you find something about the Herald's tone. <gasps> But we'll talk about Vespin first. Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I got your number. You this is like, what's happening. You did right a bunch right? of stuff that I made up and didn't tell okay. you. Okay. 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 Oh man. Um, you speak right? infernal, don't you? Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I've been calling him Betrayer God for years, and no one's been listening. Gosh, my gosh. Uh, so, here's the deal. Um, you pull a name. Right away, the reporter that got the most stuff on Vespin, that actually went out and hustled and talked to him, this this interview is like, this series of interviews is like eight or nine years old, it's like a much younger Vespin. Um, you recognize the reporter's name, Elena Tavares. Mm -hmm. uh, you, find a bunch of interviews. There's some stuff that Vespin actually said that was printed, that actually made it into some of the Herald's time. That's the easiest stuff to find. Um, he talked a big game, but even back in the day, about the matron's ritual. Um, he never made reference to himself, but he said it's a matter of time before someone recreates the ritual. He said anything that is, that is achieved, he says it goes against every virtue of this age to believe that something that is achievable by one is not at least in theory achievable by all. Um, and uh, he went on to say, again, if, you know, arrogance is a, and hubris is a staple of the age. He said that it was his belief that a future ritual would not dethrone a prime deity. He said, after all, why would we wish to remove a force from this world that while archaic and not necessarily uh, where our vision of the future comes from, are nonetheless largely benevolent? Would it not make more sense to attempt to dethrone and remove something more nefarious from existence? Uh, and uh, he, so that's, that's what you printed, because it was of magical interest to the Archmages of Avalir, right? But there's a lot of other stuff that he said and did. Um, uh, you get an actual recording, which is one of the original things that Elena Tuveras actually recorded, right? Um, you put that in. It's a recording of an interview with a cleric of Vasselheim um, that is giving a comment about our mage is attempting to recreate the matron's ritual. In the, and of course, this was taken uh, at, a gal, at a gala about like nine years ago in Vasselheim. Um, you see that the, 
the gala is clearly in Vaslan. You can see the city outside the window. Behind this cleric who's speaking, there are three people talking. Vespin Chloris, Lycretia Hollow, <gasps> and Loris of the Weaver's Mask. Mother. <sighs> he was so cool. <laughs> Cool Who's guys don't reason? do bad things. <laughs> um, oh, she left. Uh, <laughs> as this as this is, is cropping up here, do any of you have the ability to read lips, or or at least can like make an attempt? Yes. 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 As, long as, as long as it's a language that I speak. Observant. Yes, they they are speaking common. Absolutely. It doesn't have um, I'm going to <laughs> manipulate the uh, so it gives them the, the playback of this interview <laughs> and. Blow it up and enhance. Enhan you, so you see the Herald himself goes enhance, enhance, enhance. Um, again, the, you are finding a, a breakthrough that might, this city is full of every arcane tome in the world, and the thing that might save Exandria is in the back of some B-roll footage of color commentary. <laughs> Taco's still on there. Yeah. 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 It's like a shot of, of them pouring uh, champagne flutes or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, you, you zoom in, Th thankfully for the future of Avalier, you see that um, you are catching like pr profiles at an angle of Loris. You, see, you notice Loris's mask on the side of his face and Dean Hollow. So Vespin is with his back against the window speaking and you have a full view of his face and are able to sort of gather what he's saying. Reading his lips, um, you see him talking and he's clearly reacting to something that Loris has just said. And you see he's sort of being very cavalier and says, well, of course, Loris, that's your opinion and you're more than entitled to it. I don't take such a limited view of what is possible in an age of wonders. Obviously, if it were impossible, it wouldn't have already happened once. We're talking about how to improve on existing technology. The Matron's breakthrough already opened the door for all of us. Look. You should know why these things are challenging. You, it's its your fault in a way. And you see Laura says something you kind of can't see because you can't get a good eye on his lips. And he's like, oh, come now, you haven't read the pact? You know what the Gaudrashari are about. Um, he, uh, you see that he then says, says, um, uh, you see that there's a momentary confusion. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> You see, there's a moment of confusion, and he says, uh, he looks at both of them and says, the City of Crowns bears the Tree of Names. Um, he says, the City of Crowns bears the Tree of Names, uh, and says, oh, am I saying something you don't know? Maybe if you took a, le a little less time flying that city and a little bit more time cracking the books, you'd know this. And he finishes his drink uh, and walks away. City of Crowns is the one on the ground, right, Captain? Oh no, no that's, that's, that's us. us. We're the crowns. The City of Crowns bears the throne. But the yeah. tree, the tree of names. The tree of names. Do we? Names. Does that ring any bells in either of our domes? If, if any of you, if any of you can hit uh, a high DC history check right now, come on. Um, no problem. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm no expert. I think I think he said tree of gnomes. Actually, tree of gnomes. yeah, I think it was hey, gnomes. You hey, look hey. up gnomes. I'll look up tree okay. names. It was the Kubler elves <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> what's, your, what's your is your is your history? My history mod? is not great. It's only four. Yeah. That's better than yeah, mine. I'll give you a advantage. Hand. He had the big. How about I give I swear you inspiration? Do you want to give me inspiration? And then I'll also roll. Oh, <laughs> sure. Oh yeah, go for it. I will inspire you by telling you it's probably gnomes. <laughs> that. That's it? That's a D10 on top. Oh! Level 14. Level 14, okay, yeah. okay. Not great. Natural 20. Oh! oh no! Roll the D10 too, oh. just in case. Woo! Damn. For a... <laughs> 21. 31. Yeah! That's an eight oh my plus God. three. Breaking that map. Oh my crap. God. So good. Sorry, Brennan. Wait, Brennan's oh, face so got, uh, got. You have to sad. tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted it to be a fun game that we went and looked up later. Now you, you have to tell us. 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 a little bit. And that's great. I'm so proud of you. Fuck, dude. Um. <laughs> <laughs> These dice are um, uh, as you as, <laughs> as, as, as loquacious, ever. <laughs> as loquacious no. Seely says, uh, "Tree of gnomes" to you. Um, <laughs> um, 
you see a fucking suit. <laughs> 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 um, uh, tree of names. Tree of names. Uh, you remember in your training, the eyes of Avalir, uh, the tree of names was given as one of the central artifacts of Avalir. Something that the eyes of Avalir must eternally guard. If its name were ever to be mentioned, that was an immediate indication that something terrible was, that, that anyone talking about it is talking about something incredibly profoundly important to the significance and safety of Avalir. However, that's a very old piece of training for the eyes of Avalir, which is itself a very old organization. Uh, the Tree of Names, uh, I gotta honor in that 20. The Tree of Names doesn't get talked about as much anymore because uh, it was protected 120 years ago by the Arboreal Calyx. Yes! Sorry, cool. Damn, the really? The name, the Tree of Names, was protected? Or the, the tree itself was protected by the Arboreal Cortex? It was or built calyx. over it or around it? Built yeah, over and weird. around it. And that tree is fucking important if it's uh, not the core oh, of something no. important. There was a tree in my dream, in the palm of the Betrayer God. <gasps> You're right. And as Evandrin approached it, he knelt, and the blossoms from the tree caught wind and fell on him. And that's what caused him. I think that's what made him sick. At least, if, 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 if there's any truth to the, to the dream that I had, then it has something to do with the Vandrin, and that, that tree has something to do with these betrayers. There's, there's obviously a connection. We're all seeing that. Oh, interesting. Are we saying this on the group chat? I am saying that in the group chat. We will, we will when we're done okay. with yeah, our yeah, investigation, yeah. for sure. Um, I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say that you do share that on the group chat. As you do, so this is huge, because the thing at the center of the arboreal calyx you saw Vespin Chloris talking about with clear knowledge in relation to rituals of ascension and godhood. Like he was speaking to Loris and Lycretia Hollow about it in this party in Vasselheim nine years ago. But he's saying city of the City of Crowns, which is Avalir, bears the core of the arboreal calyx. Yeah, bears the tree of names. Sense. Yes, the tree of names. Um, in, in the fucking city. Um, so that's very critical. And immediately upon hearing it, you go, yeah, Arbor Arboreal Calyx is a wizard name. The Tree of Names, that's something older. That's, oh my god. That's something older. Arboreal, ibr uh, like Arbor. Arbor, yeah. Arbor, yeah. yeah yes. I said it to us earlier. Yes, you <laughs> did. Yes, it has been there the whole time. Oh, oh yeah. it's a fun little <laughs> Easter egg. Um, Ooh. <laughs> now, oh, okay. um, nasty. so. Uh, <laughs> it's real nasty. It's real nasty. <laughs> Thank you for that nat 20. I swear to God. I love the stink. Uh, I, I swear love to God. God. <laughs> now, um, now um, what I will say is this. Um, Sarah, as you hear over your telepathic bond, you hear Xerxes talk about the dream, Evandrin, his husband the previous first night. You look, and the clue you notice that has nothing to do with the records you pulled is that you see the rest of this file, this like gilded box that has rows of gilded placards within it, and it's all of the work of Elena Tuveris, this reporter. Um, at the back of it, you see a compartment labeled Evandrin Altera, and it is empty. Can I, oof. I'll bring uh, Loquacious' attention to it. This is odd, don't you think? What is, the fact that it's empty? Yeah. Former first knight, a man of great import, high esteem, yes. all missing. Who has access to these files besides you and... 
Well, Elena, the reporter who gathered this stuff, she doesn't work here anymore. Where is she? I don't honestly know. I dismissed her a number of years ago. And I haven't heard from her since. And I don't even know if she's still in Avalier. You wouldn't know where these files could, could be? She could have taken them with her, or destroyed them, or they could have been misplaced. I'll give it another look. I don't know. On the I don't know, does my ring do anything? Um, I'm going to need Loquacious to roll a deception check. Oh! It's a 30. Oh my god. So now what's going to happen is this. That's a 30. It's a 30 deception from Loquacious? Yeah. Oh my god. Your eyebrows are just so enchanting. I swear. (laughs) Now, so so that's going to, that's not that there's anything untoward happening here, but that is above what the Ring of Honor will detect. So this comes down to the instincts of Seret alone. I'm actually going to ask, I think rolls, I just, yeah, I'm going to need you to roll insight and I'm going to need you to tell me if you Crack get 30 or 30. higher. What do you 30 need to, what do you, what do you, what do you need to roll on the die to beat 30? He can't do that. Why couldn't oh. he? He's a rogue. He's no, a there's, a, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. I'm just trying to see. Oh God, he's stacking all his shit. Yeah, I inspire <laughs> him. The, remember the, the, ring, the ring, the ring gives you advantage. I was just checking it. The ring gives you advantage on detecting lies. So uh, to, to break a 30, I need a 17. Fuck. Or higher. You can do you it. You can do it. Come on. Nope. No. No. Oh. Oh. 23. Oh, oh my god. Oh. So stressed out. Oh. Holy shit. Um, you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> you used the wrong guy? Our secrets were fun. <laughs> so, you observe that. You have Loquacious's answer, and Loquacious, um, possible disgruntled reporter, cleared this out. And obviously, this is pro- you know, <laughs> she was sloppy in what her. Was her w- what was her name again? El- Elena Tavares. But she was sloppy in her work, and this was One. yet another example of why she had to be dismissed. It would occur to Quay as well that you have lots of crystals on Evandra and Altera. This is just Elena's file box. So other reporters that reported on Evandrin's stories and his accomplishments, there's plenty of those. Yes, so uh, if you want to know other facts about Evandrin, we can go diving. I don't think that's pressing information right now. I'm sorry, it's been such a late night. You said you think she's still in the city or she's left? I have, I don't know where she is, do I? Um, I, uh, uh, I think you uh, would would Loquacious have kept up with like former employees? Do you think? If she's still in the biz, I would absolutely <laughs> know. Actually, just give me a history check. I'll just let you. Yeah, I'll let you know. She's still in What's the right? IMDb. Yeah. <laughs> On IMDb, sure. I check people out. <laughs> yeah, just history. Yeah. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, yeah, her her family's in the city. She's not a reporter anymore. Um, there, you know, like like the city is so dominated by the Herald's Tome that if you get fired from there, there's not competition to go to. Sure. Um, uh, so you think that she's working as like a clerk or a scribe somewhere in the city? Okay, there you go. Okay. Maybe I'll follow up with her if, if everything else runs dry, please I'm sure. Please do, and please tell me what happened to those files. They belong to us. I agree, it's probably nothing. Stop. I look so stressed out. <laughs> you, <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, let me be very clear, I love this You know what happens to those files. <laughs> My ass is a G, and I love this. Oh man, this is uh, like a movable force, like irresistible force, movable object, <laughs> fucking incredible. Uh, a changeling media wow. personality and an Eric Hokra detective. Wow. Um, uh, incredible. Um, all right. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. He's literally feeling himself. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, incredible. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, we report all that over the, the airwaves to our friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you guys up to? Uh, well, let's find out. Um, we move from here 
Um, to the uh, we move from here to the Magisterium. Um, uh, you arrive in the Magisterium. Um, uh, uh, as you arrive, you walk through vast doors leading to grand sweeping double staircases that go up to a massive parliament, a circular structure of various thrones, the thrones uh, all surrounding the high thrones, the eight thrones that you see there is the seventh throne of uh, Grisaria Lucered, and there is the throne of the fourth, which is Micah Cormorant's throne. It is dark as well here in the Magisterium as you approach. Uh, the private offices of the Magisters, again, of which there are 380, it is a massive, massive chamber. Uh, the building is an enormous civic complex. Um, where would you travel as you arrive at the Magisterium, Pesha and Laren? Uh, Laren is caught just a moment uh, with like envy and contempt that the Court of Workings is like four people in a sweat box, and there's 380 assholes that get very little done, and this place slaps, and she's mad, and has forgotten temporarily why she's here. What the fuck? What the fuck? Inefficiency is the game. It's all about the pageantry. Yeah. Cormorant, we need to find, I, we need to f talk to him, figure out what's going on. Yes. But I also need to find out any information I can on the construction and purpose of the arboreal calyx. It's siphoning energy, and I don't know why. And I don't like when I don't know things. Hmm. As I walk, you can just hear like Pesha's heeled boots that she has on just echo through the hall with each clack with every step. The question is, do we just walk right up to his office, the Magister's, or is there a more strategic approach here? From what we know from before and what we just heard, he's much more of a threat. So I would caution, we should be stealthy. I don't think this is a conversation. Do we see any signs of life, any lanterns lit, any noise from any halls? Not in the chamber. You approach the offices, walking the marble staircase. Clack, 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 clack. You see Magister Cormorant's office. Doors closed. Say, door of beautiful, polished, deep red wood with a bright gold knob and a placard that gives the name and station Magister Micah Cormorant of the Fourth Throne. Door is shut. You can see any lights on, any shadows? You see no lights on inside. Nothing? Nothing. so I open the door. <laughs> yeah. Now, as you attempt to open the door, the door is locked. How authoritative do the assembled wizards feel like being? I hate restraint. Do you happen to have a knock spell handy? I can do you one better. I summon Construct. What's the biggest, oh. dumbest statue in here? It's mine now. <laughs> I'll have it, thanks. Um, yeah. thanks. Um, a statue of a like spell knight behind you in the wall. We answer the call of the architect. Open the door. <laughs> the door <laughs> is blasted yes. off its hinges uh, oh, and scatters shit. into a darkened office. Um, I'm going to need perception checks from each of you. Real quick, I just 
press to digitation and turn on all the lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Lights come on. Did you say perception? Mm-hmm. Oh god, my perception. I've got good perception. Math. 15 total. 23. Uh, Architect Arcane, as your uh, construct smashed the door in, you heard something in here. Oh. <laughs> uh, show yourself. Roll initiative. He's going to. Roll initiative. Roll initiative. Let's go. Let's go. Hold on. Let's do this. Beautiful. Here we go. Look what at the guys. Things. Here is the magister's office. Oh, that's um, so cute. Uh, uh, here we go. Um, and now I have to grab a couple oh, more look things. At this. Look uh, at is this a, a Brennan Mulligan map? This is a wonderful Matt Mercer map. Oh. Oh. Matt and me hung out all morning this morning, and uh, uh, Just Matt is a true is wizard. Nice. Uh, uh, I can only say, Matt, thank you so so much, Yay. and also Rick Perry, I miss you. Oh. <laughs> to say Map Mercer, and that's okay. <gasps> Map, Map Mercer! Mercer. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, it's a brand. <laughs> wow. Okay, it is wizard time. Uh, we have the beautiful oh, Keisha and wow. Larry. Oh, look at that! You're so cute! Oh, oh my god, that was interesting! So cute. Look at you, though, in your oh, signature we'll purple. So yeah. Look at us. Disagree. Together we look like a blue Disagree. raspberry pop tart. Oh, look at that! Purple and teal. Yay! Okay. All right, make Delicious. sure they have their construct. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, where's yes, my big they boy? Need it. We're going to get the big boy. Where's my, lo my lovely gentleman? Oh. 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 Uh, here's our friend. Oh, oh look at him. He's great. Um, nice. uh, amazing. Son of a bitch. Son this. of a bitch. Ow. I mean, I everyone on the the telepathic bond knows that yes. happening Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm immediately clocking that. Thank God we're, we're just in the sky Griffin. on a griffin. We like, are. That's all this craziness. <laughs> I'll <laughs> Just keep being like, should we land? No, we have to go. Oh, Too holy much. crap. Oh, man. Simon Construct is cool. Um, uh, yeah, that was fucking dope. That was <laughs> nice job. so cool. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, I love it. I, I, it feels so right in the Age of Arcanum game to roll initiative and throw a map down for, for two wizards in yeah. beautiful evening gowns <laughs> coming in. Yeah. <laughs> Champagne flute still in hand, by the way. Walked just walked into a room like a farmer. <laughs> that pass was handed to us. <laughs> Not yet. Holy moly. <laughs> Not yet. Um, so vicious. Uh, Combat does that to me. Gives me constant anxiety and adrenaline. I swear. Um, well, it's weird. It is tough being separate. I'm like so scared. I know, you, I know you guys are okay. I know you guys are okay. Right, well, <laughs> I just wish I was there to give you Bardic or, uh -huh. or cast <laughs> Blur. Maybe. So um, we don't see anything, though. Do we see anything? You don't see anything right now. Um, we're going to grab. Uh, uh, ba -ba. This uh, bad boy's made of stone or metal. Uh, oh, this bad boy yeah. here? Stone. Stone metal. Cool. Cool. Stone metal. Stone or metal. So you have your stuff there, yeah. and I assume you're holding concentration, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, copy that. So concentration, bada boom. Um, bada boom. Amazing. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, what do we roll for initiative? <laughs> 18. 18 for patient. 42. <laughs> five. <laughs> did you say five? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wizard! Did you say five? Wizard! <laughs> uh, 18 for patient, and then. Five. Five, okay. <laughs> um, and your construct is acting directly after me. Copy that. Uh, so, uh, what's in there? Exactly. Yeah. I don't see I an opponent. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Unless okay. the opponent is their own anxiety. Wow, they have to wait <laughs> themselves. The opponent Look is the really calamity. <laughs> it's a cat that just knocks something over. <laughs> uh, so, first to act is going to be Pasha. The door has exploded off. You've walked into uh, Magister Cormorant's office. There are tables, fireplaces. You see some teleportation daises here for like, you know, porting around the city. Um, and, uh, you and and there's some like papers. There's a chest in the corner. Other documents are around, um, but you are first to act as Laren says, "Show yourself." Nothing 
has happened yet, but you feel a crackling of arcane energy and Laren's certainty that there is someone in this chamber. Do I sense a spell being cast? Uh, I think, yeah, I think that what you can, what you can sense is you feel the familiar rush of arcane energy. You feel a surge of something moving in the direction of conflict. Moving in the direction of conflict. But you're, but you have the jump on whoever's in here. So like a construct smashing a door across a room will certainly, you know, make whatever force is in here. But you cannot see anything at present. Okay, let me let me look at something. Mm. Mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> this one's a little. I'm going to let DM rule here. Yeah, go for it. Is this a situation where a counter spell would count? The ruling on, I believe, counter spell yeah, is uh, you attempt to interrupt a creature in the process of casting a spell. Uh, do you need to be able to see it? You attempt to interrupt a creature. I don't think you need to be able to see it. Shut up. Cool. That's why I'm DM ruling here. Um, I am going to double check that because that's very important. Going to go to the full spell. There is nothing. Go, go. No, I'm just nervous. In your chair. In your chair. I'm going to have and I'm going to have and I'm going to have and have. I think that you are in the clear. It does not. There's there is nothing. There is a range of sixty feet, but there is nothing here that says you need line of sight. So I just sense the direction that the energy is coming from mm -hmm. and, and crack my wrists and just dispel. It's almost like a little mental nuclear blast that pulses outward and kind of shields Laren and I. Sorry, I have such bad news and it's coming on behalf of Jeremy Crawford who lets us know that yeah, counterspell you requires you, counterspell requires you to see the spellcaster you're yeah. countering. Okay, Locker. copy that. Instead. Thanks, Jeremy. God. Thank you, Jeremy. Damn it. Everything Germany is watching this right. Now. Germany <laughs> requires <laughs> sight. I thought I remembered it. It's not. It's not in the script. It's in the. It's in the portion of the player's handbook on Twitter. Um, so <laughs> yeah. it's not in the PHB. But yes. Um, so okay. How about this? In st wait, wait. Let me. Sorry. No, no. You're not playing. I'm not sure range. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I can feel the direction that it's coming from, I'm assuming he must be invisible or something like that. This just says choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Can I dispel magic and try and blast him with dispel? What is Germany I love with wizards just being like, I don't like your magic, I would like it to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. So because you cannot detect okay, so that, okay. it. Um, Damn. What I will say. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, there are ways for you to know where someone is without having to see them. Sure. Cologne. I mean, <laughs> Don't worry. I could always do yet another detect thoughts or detect magic. Ah, oh, that hole's in the corner. <laughs> I'll detect magic. How about that? <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, as this is happening, um, what is Patia like, like going through as you are in here? Like you're reaching down um, for. Uh, hold on one second. Um, so, uh, amazing. You cast detect magic. Boom. Um, I'm going to say, because there is a spell specifically called Sea Invisibility, this is going to give you a direction, right? Um, sure. And actually, I'll go ahead and ask for a perception check That's here. Sea Invisibility. Oh my god, my oh perception no. checks have been bad. 10. Fuck. Um, on a 10 perception check, you cast Detect Magic. You can detect a powerful illusion in the room. You know that something is hidden in here. Um, you immediately get the feeling of it being to uh, like to your left. It is towards the left and left side of the room, um, as you feel in that direction. So mm. uh, you feel something over there that is some kind of illusory presence, but you can't detect the exact square that it's on. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I just, my brain, it, Pasha's brain is moving a thousand miles a minute as I'm trying to clock everything, and I turn and I just shout to Laren, west side of the room. Copy that. Laren. Yeah. You act next. Oh, it doesn't go. Uh, question, and I'm assuming the answer is no. Is there any universe in which uh, our invisible foe is within 10 feet of this big boy? This invisible foe is not within 10 feet okay. of this big boy. Totally fine. Um, then this is going to be a to whom it may concern. I'm going to cast Fireball. Yes! <laughs> That's what I would have yeah. done. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? If I have a direction, I know how to <laughs> yeah. get a concentration check. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, hell yeah, go ahead and roll damage. Or actually, uh, so sorry. Deck You're, save against a 20. Damn. Amazing. 20? Level 14. Oh. Um, let me ask a question That's to you. Ferocious. Um, so, uh, you go ahead and drop a fireball. Um, as you drop a fireball, you get hit with a counterspell. Oh. Force. Uh, your construct can go. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it's a high enough counterspell where it just kills the fireball. Well, fireball's third level. Right. This was technically upcast of four. Oh, was it? Yeah. I'll go ahead and roll in that case. I'll be very fair-minded. It's fine, don't worry about it. No, 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 I'll go ahead and roll. Um, we'll, make, we'll leave it up to the dice. Make a uh, roll, make a roll. Thank you. Make a roll. While we make still can. Uh, hell yes. Uh, here we go. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna roll this in front of the board, actually, because I like that, and that feels fun to me. Um, feels fun to you? Feels fun to me to roll in front of the board. Feels fun to you. <laughs> uh, our friend here needs. Ooh, get out of here! Yeah. Isn't that fun? Uh, our That's friend cute. here needs an eleven or higher to overcome your fireball. Oh. A ten oh. fails oh. by one. Oh, yeah. on a twelve. Oh my God. Go ahead. Side rolling on that. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. There you go. Still need a deck save from him. Yeah. Make him roll. yeah. Uh, nine. Jesus. That's good shit. Let's play a beautiful yeah. game. Those are all real good. These Let's are very play a whole beautiful shit. game. Let us play a beautiful <laughs> game. Is that correct? 41. Yeah. 41 yeah. points of fire damage. Good job! 41 points. Good job! So this dude's got to make a DC 20 constitution save? Yeah, no thanks. Even shit up. Okay. Well, let's be fair, he still has to make the deck save to like not take half damage. Oh, he quite failed. The okay, deck save. <laughs> I was just trying he, to. I nice. hit a nat one back here on that deck oh, save. Okay. Uh, -huh. uh, okay, we're going to roll again. This is a 19 or 20 on the die, or he drops concentration. 14. 14. Not going to get the job done. Um, uh, you <laughs> lay down uh, this fireball, uh, and Magister Micah Cormorant oh, appears. Oh, he's a um, <laughs> his, uh, his, You see he's, he has a bunch of incredible evoker arcanotech gear. <laughs> As you deal, how much, 44, how much? 41. 41? Wow. Hachi machi. Um, Hachi machi. Uh, so, uh, uh, Pesha, you walk in, uh, Clock the direction, and they're like, Arcane, it's been a minute. Look, they think I'm just constantly holding concentration on stuff that keeps the city afloat. I get very mad! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, uh, a perfect casting of Fireball, uh, such that the the summoning of it, it's, it's, it's so spherical, what a round ball of fire. <laughs> Technically perfect, as everything Laren does is, boom, uh, Magister appears horrifically burned and screaming as greater invisibility drops. Your construct may act, unless you have a bonus action. Uh, oh god, what would a bonus action would be? Uh, no, that's fine, I feel good with that. Uh, I'm just gonna have uh, my big boy move forward. That's so I'll talk about his eyes, so plus 12. All right, as the construct goes up and makes two slam attacks, uh, with a plus 12 to hit, uh, 18. 18 and definitely hits. He's already 19. burned his reaction on a counter spell. Cool. 18 and 19. Um, plus four. What is a D8? Oh god, I'm so nervous. 
26 points of bludgeoning damage. Whoa. What? Whoa. Yes. Yeah. What does he add to smack? Uh, it's a D8 plus four plus a spell's level of Brennan, bludgeoning Brennan, damage. Brennan's grip. Yeah, per slam attack he does too. <laughs> Um, Magister Cormorant appears on the verge of casting Chain Lightning, and instead you burn him half to death, and your construct punches his chest so hard that it breaks all of his ribs, oh. uh, smashes his heart and organs into the wall behind him, and he is dead. Oh! oh. That's it? That's all she wrote, folks. 66 oh. hit points. Let's go! Oh my god. Damn it. Thank you. Oh. Damn. Yeah. Holy fuck. <sighs> Patient's <What>? like. <laughs> <laughs> You want to bring him back up to talk to him? I don't have healing magic. I don't either. Why don't we take him to Xerxes? <laughs> Damn! Oh no. Um, oh no. Hey, problems are getting solved quick over here. Oh, oh, that was a very nice map. Oh, shit. Was that, the, was that the big bad of the whole four episode <laughs> arc? Yeah, we, we just it. killed it? We're fine, yeah. we did it. <laughs> Um, I, we need I, to... I, do, I jump over the um, our our walkies and I go, hello, yes, Brasswing, uh, Brassring, we accidentally killed the Magister. Brassway. It was it. Which ma accident. which Magister? Cormorant. Wait, oh. did you were you able were you able to speak to him? Yeah, get meaningful information and intel out of him. That's what Xerxes is for. Xerxes! Did you kill him or just knock him unconscious? No, he's dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Look, I can cast mending on his chest. I've tried that once, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> Um, oh hey, uh, some fights are about verisimilitude. This was one shady oh. evoker. Those guys have 66 hit points and an armor class of 15, and uh, Oh, an evoker? Anyone can cast fireball, bitch. You're <laughs> 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 not special. Uh -huh. um, roll higher than a two on your initiative, and that's really the end of the story. Sure. That's really what it comes down to. Um, wow. Speaker of the Fourth. Yeah, Speaker of the Fourth means he was a representative like for Speaker of the House, okay. almost. Yeah, it, so for there's the eight different people yeah. that represent like basically entire like magisterial bodies. He Got represented it. the fourth such voting body. Got it. Um, uh, so uh, Cormorant is dead. However, you're in his you're in his office. You're in his chambers. Um, mm -hmm. The construct stands guard here, um, but there's plenty to go over here if you. I, like. I still have that detect magic up, Ooh, <laughs> technically. Yeah. So, um, oh, <laughs> uh, detect magic. You you scan over. Uh, give me an arcana check with advantage okay. with the detect magic up. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Twenty nine. Um, uh, Twenty nine. These uh, the teleportation deuses in here have been tampered with. Um, <gasps> the seal has been broken on them uh, in terms of their registry with the Porter's Guild. So he's been doing it rogue off the record? Rogue off the record. Can I see where he's been teleporting to with these? Like, are they attuned to a certain place? You lean down uh, and see that there is a uh, bit of illusory magic, which I won't even make you use a full dispel magic. It's a, it's effortless for you to dispel, to dispel it. Boom. Uh, one of the runes written in Draconic, which is a very classical, easy language to do arcane writing in, uh, is not Draconic. There's an infernal rune carved hastily into the dais, hidden by an illusion. Um, and uh, you don't think he's been leaving, you think he's been inviting people in. I think we found our leak. Huh. Um, as you say this, Go ahead, uh, if you have any other investigations, if there's any other divination you want to cast, or if you want to look at his documents, there's a, gonna, there's a bunch of stuff in here. I want to look for files I'm looking for. Letting Go. him into the magisterium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo, mm -hmm. of all the places for Come entry. On. It's you, bad you, here. That's you, you, I have to, right you have, under you, our <laughs> you, see, you hear Xerxes go through the comms again and just ask, so how dead is he? <laughs> dead? Um. Third degree burns all over his body. It's uh, about 88%, and um, his torso is completely crushed. Got it. Okay, well. Is this, yeah. You have to forgive dead. me. I assume the construct was not like, all right, let's just ding right. the guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know what killed him. I yeah, just know he died. Sure. <laughs> I mean, if his mouth is still there, that's kind of all we need. Right? That's right. Grab the mouth, please. 
<laughs> um, His okay. vital uh, organs are yeah. against the wall. I want to cast look. any magic about it you want to cast, and give me any checks you want to give me. I'm gonna make an investigation check. Uh, that's gonna be oh. an amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Twenty-two to look for any files. I would love to say that I'm looking broadly about like Vespin and stuff. I'm looking for my stuff. Hell yeah. Um, looking looking through the files here, what you see is that the stuff that Magister the the late Magister Cormorant was interested in was your stuff. You see, he's already pulled history and records all about the arboreal calyx all about the Gaudrashari, the Pact of Crown and Throne, all of that stuff's in his office already. And you can see that uh, there was research going on here. You see a lot of this is about magical law, so it's about the nature of the pact, and you see that there is a scroll pulled from the Librarium Magisterium, not your library. This is the Library of Magical Law. Um, okay. And you see, you find a letter composed on ancient, hundred-year-old birch bark. Maybe even, you know, like, and and you see the script is this like beautiful silvery ink on birch bark. Um, and the letter portends of a conversation. You, you sort of can infer what it must be responding to. In effect, in many more words, the letter says, Honorable Magister, your assurances are taken in the most generous spirit possible. I do not distrust you, the person, for all people are children of Exandria, but What I distrust is enchantment. The enchantment of a people and of their ways. The wizards of Avalir have proven time and again that they do not see limitation. They do not see the limitation of a city that will be born aloft into the sky, nor do they see risk. I wish that I could trust you. I wish that my order could trust you. I wish that we could, in good faith, tell you of the tree's purpose. Sorrow fills my heart, for even if you kept your word, the wizard behind you, if they knew the nature of the tree, I can only imagine would see all that they could do with it and not what they could do for it. I implore you, the endless skies of Exandria are yours. The wonders of your imagination are your only master. Please, simply tend for this tree and do not ask again we cannot trust you with its secrets. Head Druid of the Galdrashari, the Temple of Toramunda. Uh, you date this letter to probably around the time that the Arboreal Calyx was created, and you see records here that after the Matron's Ascension, basically, the city landed a year after that, and the druids all came aboard Avalir and said, "We need to update. <laughs> we need to. We need to go." And you find records here in this place. Prior to that, the Tree of Names stood alone in the chamber of the Calyx. Uh, you see here the other other bits of history. Um, 
having to do with Toramunda, having to do with old Mount Igora. You see there's like an ancient piece of ritual about the Emperor Rao Shan and the Empress Kamort, which are the, the primordials that the Dawn Father and the Wild Mother defeated at Mount Igora and sealed away. Um, you see like early Druidic like prayer scrolls essentially to like the the ancient base of the mountain. Um, and uh, all of that is unveiled to you, and it's all here in Cormorant's office. With what time I have, I just uh, mage hand out all of these scrolls, and you see kind of this similar silvery strand kind of sucking the text out of the scrolls, making a copy as it zips into my sphere with just each one we come across. I'm copying and pasting. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you? Yeah. Yeah. I see you're trying to um, steal some scrolls. <laughs> I think just the letter on the, the birch is like the only thing that Laren would hold on to, and she is devastated. He wasn't worthy enough. He wasn't. But we are. Mm. Yeah. We have to be. Our tenacity far exceeds the Magisters. You're right. Those who are privileged, those who are given everything, do not know how to fight. As ever, correct. <laughs> Give me one last uh, either investigation or arcana with advantage. Two is terrible. Two twice, so a 12. <laughs> oh, no. Copy that. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Disgraceful. <laughs> um, amazing. Cool. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> We are going to uh, uh, we are going to uh, depart from the magisterium. You have found what you came to find. You have, and if you if you wish to like have this construct carry Cormorant's, like wrap up Cormorant's body in a rug and carry it behind you. You want this corpse? Mm. As long I'm as it's useful. Over. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm? Are you are you reaching yeah. out to me again? Yes. Do I have to do the, like the uh, professor? I don't know. Right, I don't know. I just was doing that because you guys were doing it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Of course, I have it. Eagles uh, there's nothing I can do for that guy. By the time I get there, he'll be too dead. Hmm. But we can take him to the oracles, which is where we're heading. And if we get in and we find one, maybe they can raise him hmm. or speak Wait. with or him. speak with him. Yeah, I'm worried about the optics of walking with the body. I am also worried about the optics of yeah. walking with the body. I Maybe mean, just sort of put him in a closet somewhere. Or? Yeah. Uh, you see that the construct wraps up the body and goes to hide it somewhere that you will be able to come later in the evening. My God. <laughs> um, it's hard. You can feel the palpable joy of a construct. You, lots of statues wait hundreds of years and never get woken up by the oh, architect really? arcane. And this guy's like, we did it, baby. Yes, <laughs> this was our day. Yes, wizard woke me up. Um, I'm call him Scrabbles. Oh, nice. Scrabbles? Oh, yeah. I've been named. <laughs> Stone tears. Yeah. Um, you, As we leave, I'm just like, hey, just um, remember, every magister sucks, and I'm your only friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, we move to the Hall of Prophecy. We're flying there. Flying there. Yes. You guys get there quick. Ooh, kitty. Um, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, the Hall of the Oracles. An order of clerics dedicated to accessing a connection to the divine without the use of gods. The oracles of this place long ago found a way of manifesting a connection to the divine, but their lives are challenging. They, they live partially in hermitage. 
requires great preparation for one of the prophets here and to actually be able to deliver prophecy and divination to people. It takes a lot out of them. You arrive at this colossal marble building, Tempest, your griffin lands. You move inside. As you walk into the space, uh, you see a familiar friend of yours, Xerxes, uh, a young woman that you know, Sapphira, mm-hmm. uh, walk out. Um, you see that the doors close behind her, um, and you see that there are a number of spell guard here, a number of like high arch sept guard here. Um, Sapphira steps out and says, I saw the approaching light of Tempest. Xerxes, it's good to see you, my friend. As it is good to see you. Guildmaster Okiro. An oracle. It is a pleasure and an honor. Um, it has been some time since last we saw you. I, I have never taken offense. I've always taken you for a man comfortable writing his own fate. Of course. There is, uh, yes, very much so. Um, how can I be of assistance? The hall has been closed, I'm afraid. It has been. We wanted to inquire about the nature of your closing. Ah. We've been told that this is rather irregular. Is it not? Yes. Uh, um, quite. Uh, can I make an inside check? Make an inside check for me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a happy diarrhea. I don't like this pausing. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Only a 16. Um, no, I'll make a deception check. You have to count that one. (laughs) Troubled. Very troubled. Uh, Bloodshot eyes, this this woman has been crying a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh Um, The the guardians of the Archcept um, have been uh, spoken to, they've been asked by um, Loris of the Weaver's Mask to not allow any entrance. Uh, has he has he given you entrance to enter? Um, he has. <laughs> yes. yes. Give me the deception Come on. check, baby. Let's go. Come on, baby. Um, oh my. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's the extent Let's of the lie. That's it. Yeah, he, he has. has. He's the dragon. How did you Deception. Know? Deception. Come on, man. Come on. 26? Oh, okay. pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, she says, oh, um, incredible. Uh, the arch, <laughs> you see that the, 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 the warriors, the warriors behind say, uh, Guildmaster, is, is this so you have been given leave to come? Of course. It, it is key to the replenishment and our aims. We are all in Congress around our shared goal, Loris, Xerxes, myself. Um, even oh my you know, God. even you know, Nidus, listen, man, you've been keeping 10,000 plates spinning, yeah. and even you are like, I'm way out on a limb on this one. <laughs> I'm way the fuck out here on this one. <laughs> Just the way you like it. <laughs> and he actually, said, he actually said, he's my best friend. Um, he actually said, and he said that I'm the best at magic he's ever seen. <laughs> That's why he sent me down here, because he's like, you got to go check this out, my guy. You're the best. You're the best guy I know. Um, so what, what you see mm-hmm. on this on this incredible deception is effectively uh, this shouldn't work. All, all you did, like, first of all, she said the thing you needed to say to get in, and then you repeated it, and they go like, come in, and you see even the warriors here, no insight n- necessary. Like Xerxes, you look at the warriors here. Yeah. Uh, you you monitor every group of warriors here. You know these guys are the high sept guardians. They are powerful eldritch knights, all of them. This is, you know, like this is they're the real deal. They look nervous and unfocused as they stand guard here. Um something is not right. You walk in with Sophira, um, and she says, um As she, as we're walking in, I do want to communicate to Xerxes about she seems uh distraught. I see. The eyes. Um, something. Uh, I'm gonna, um, as as we start to walk by, I, I'm gonna slow down and kind of um, uh, get closer to her and lean in 
and I'm going to tell her, uh, Sophira, we've known each other for a long time. We've studied together many years ago. Uh, you can tell me anything. I want you to know that you can rely on me. Is there anything we should know? It's best you come with me. Wide marble passages framed in torchlight. Most places here glow with arcane alchemical light. This is lit by fire. Even in marble, this place is trying to attach to something primal. Disconnected from the ground, they're trying to reach through. Moving through this place, you feel almost a sense of the fire flickering. It feels like you're walking underwater, almost, as it dapples the marble walls. There's something here where it echoes and feels full and empty at once, a contradiction. This place is more philosophical, more divine. It's very outside the normal, lucid, you know, environs mm. of Avalir. So Fyra walks through. I, I'm very glad Loris sent you. He, he, his instructions were not very clear, and there's just very few of us left, um, or left. Um, what has he tasked you with here? To close the hall. I, I, well, he, he only took over. He only took over yesterday. Um, he, he stepped in. Um, um, he, he stepped in after Volusia of the Heart's Emblem. Uh, yes, she's uh, stepping down, I've heard. She, um, I'm, gonna t I'm just going to kind of put a, a gentle hand on her shoulder and tell her, just to reassure her. It's one way of putting it. Oh. Is she here? Or what's left of her? She's left Avalir forever. Ooh. What? caused that. She looks over. You see over near one of the teleportation daises that are like the inner the inner city, the ones you've been using to get around. Um, you see that there is a scar of soot on the ground in a circle. You see? What? <laughs> no word. She, she looks and says, that's where she that's where she broke her staff across her knee and renounced magic forever. Whoa. Whoa. It has been a tr troubled time here at the Hall of Prophecy. Uh, is there somewhere to sit nearby that I can like, I'm just trying to put her more at ease. And what is the general uh, people in our yes. space? It's, it is empty in here. It's the three of you, literally. Got it. This is a place that would normally be like a, an entry hall for people to come and wait and hear these like oracular visions and, yeah. you know. Um, she, you go, I mean, the best you got is these little steps up on this teleportation dais. Uh -huh. So she goes and sits aside that and you're looking at this like ring of soot where a mage sundered their own arcane focus, potentially. Right. Volusia was a member of the Ring of Gold, one of the 14 apprentices. Um, she was she was Loris's counterpart. Um, she said, oh, um, about, um, about two weeks ago. Um, about two weeks ago, um, there's no other way to put it. Um, oracles started going mad. <laughs> they started going mad. How many? One at first. Um, she's still here. Carwin, she uh, she went first and, and hard. She started uh, speaking false prophecies, babbling. Um, her, her oracular vision failed. Um, and at first we attempted to heal her ourselves. Healing is what we study here at the Hall of Prophecy. And we did our best to reach out to her. Everyone who tried to heal her went mad, too. Mm. Um, and what's happened to them? Are they here? They're, <laughs> they're all still here. 
we have kept them here. Um, about um, as we were over Gwasar, uh, traveling on our way to Dominus, um, we reached out. We we reached out um, to the uh, the Octothurge at first, and, and just asked if there was. We reached out to um, the Chair of Divination, which is the closest. The, the school that we interact with the most, mm. uh, and they immediately um, conferred with uh, the Ring of Gold. Um, Volusia came and for the past little over a week was helping us try to understand this. Um, there were still enough of us who felt safe and whole, and we were able to perform our tasks, and then a few days ago, um, a few days ago, um, we thought Carwin might be well enough to uh, come back out, and we let her take a walk. And she turned to the other oracles, and um, Xerxes, it's just me. It's just me. You're the last one? Yes. The rest are, are being kept safe, because they've all lost their minds. Safe from themselves. What did, um, what was it exactly that caused Valeria to renounce magic? I don't know. It was an argument she had with her contemporary. Laura, Laura's. Yes. So they were arguing, I... Uh, give me uh, an insight check. Mm. You got it. 18. 18. You want to give me an insight check as well? Yeah. Beat, Beat no. me. Almost, though. It was almost a 20, but a seven. She says, I don't remember. They were, they were speaking to each other. All I remember her saying is, if these gifts harm us, then we should not accept them. Uh, can I? She, oh, she said that to Loras. Yes. Did and she, while she was working on what she came here to help you investigate, was she keeping any notes anywhere? She was the most able to soothe Carwin and and she, Carwin is is safe right now. She she is better than she was when we tried to have her come walk and, and rejoin us. Uh, Velusia worked on on creating a um, circle of runes that we've moved Carwin's bed into. She's she's able to speak, um, but on the day she left. Before that, I remember we found Carwin in one of the bathing rooms. Um, I can take one of you there. Uh, it would be better if it's it's probably for the best if you don't both speak with Carwin. We found that it is much more helpful for there to just be one person in the room with her. Um, Let me go. I'll go. Uh, I'm going to think to the channel. Um, I'm just going to update everybody on what's happening, and uh, I think that the business that we have here is going to take a little while longer. If you find that you have accomplished your tasks, feel free to come and join us. We could use some arcane eyes on these circles as well. I'm going to put situations. my arcane eyes to uh, the soot marks. Mm -hmm. um, give me an arcana check. Come on, Lou. Here it is. Come on, this is big money. I'll take it. 24? Mm. 24. Um, staff was, uh, you, you see it, a staff was sundered here. Um, she broke her staff, she broke her arcane focus. It would not have been a magical item, it would have just been a staff that she had been using as her arcane focus. Broke it and removed her ability to perform magic. Uh, there's no way emotionally to describe the weight of what you're seeing. It is. Uh, uh, Pro especially for someone who loves magic as much as Nidus, it's probably nauseating to comprehend, to like, consider. How? It's, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it, telepathically, I just send across. Is she still alive, Val? We haven't gotten. Well, left Avalir. Left yes, Avalir. We, is that was alive. what we were told, so she but is alive. What right? Think. You think? What does left mean? No one yes. leaves Avalir. No one leaves Avalir. We have. Okay. Hold, um, hold on. We can leave. Just why would you? Correct. That's yeah. what I mean. Um. So you're you're gonna examine? Yeah, I'll stay in the okay. entry chamber, keep an eye out, those sorts of things. Um, you see that Sapphira leads you to Carwin's <laughs> chamber. Um, you see um, that Sapphira looks and says, um, "If there's anything else you'd like to look at, we can. I can show you the I, the bathing chamber, perhaps. Yes, 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 yes. Well, um, it's gonna take a bath. Um, your boy's, <laughs> your boy's gonna get comfy. <laughs> oh, I'll be in the hot tub. <laughs> Wait. Just fully watch this woman have an emotional breakdown and be like, this is too much. <laughs> uh, a lot happening in the last yeah, exactly. couple Let's hours. Let's throw some Epsom salt in here, I swear. <laughs> this is too much. Um, uh, I've had enough. You, uh, she takes you to the bathing chambers. Give me an investigation check. Something I'm not good at. Uh, and she, yeah, she she takes you to Carwin's chamber. Yes. Oh, thank God, a dirty twenty. Yay! Ooh, Ooh. a dirty twenty is great. Um, you walk in as Sophira is talking, mm -hmm. um, and you see that she starts saying, um, "We brought Carwin here. She was in good spirits. She she was even able to laugh." A little. She, she. We told her that she had been delivering false prophecies, and she laughed and said, "Well, I suppose I'm as bad an oracle as I was a weaver's apprentice." And we laughed, and um, you know, she. And you look and see the mirrors over uh -huh. the sort of washing basins. There's a big crack in one. Of course. Um, we're going to go to the chamber with Carwin. As we, as we start walking, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask her, uh, what sorts of prophecies was she speaking about? Do you recall any, any, any names, any, any, anything at all? I can go, I can go pull the, it was, it was written down, everything she said was written down, so I, I can go pull that. that please. I'll go, I'll go grab it at once. And then she goes off with you to go look at the bathing chamber. You go into the room with uh, Carwin. You walk in, um, and you see a circle of white runes gathered around a Small and humble bed, a wash basin, a small chest of clothes that have all kind of been collected in a bizarre sort of a room compressed, and, and all of the furniture that would be up against the walls instead compressed into the center of kind of a circle. Um, and you see sleeping in the bed is a young woman, dark skin, curly dark hair, sleep. She looks restful. Give me an insight check. Mm. Come on, baby. Ooh, 24. <laughs> she, for whatever it's worth to you, you were expecting to see someone ravaged by some affliction. You see a strong, healthy-looking woman deep in rest. Mm, I'm going to. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get closer. I want to get a closer look, and I want to see what is, um, uh, uh, you know, the, it, it, it just investigate anything that's underneath it. I mean, is she? Did they make a, like a magic circle or something? Yeah, around there? the magic circle around yes. the bed. Yeah. Uh, you is walk it up pulsing to pulsing or anything. Um. You walk in to look under the bed, nothing is pulsing. You see there's an object under the bed, though, kind of centered under the bed. Uh -huh. uh, it's a small hand mirror. Vibe check. Vibe check. It's a mirror, guys. It's fine. <laughs> 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 I'm... <laughs> 
I'm I'm gonna see, I, I want to get a good look at him. At, 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 I'm gonna walk around. Yeah. And yeah. take a good look from every angle. Yeah. Look around to see if there's any other mirrors. Because <laughs> mirrors are a thing now in this place. It is true. And if I don't notice anything out of the ordinary, then I'm going to go to her, um, whatever side, maybe if she's sleeping on her side, I'm going to go towards, uh, to the side of the bed that her face is um, facing. So it could be turned to me. Mm -hmm. And if I don't notice anything from that little walk around, I'm going to very gently call her name. You do notice something in your walk around. Okay. As you, as you are moving through the space here, you walk around a corner of the bed. As you get beside the, as you get beside. Can I activate something? Yeah, go for it. Divine sense. Yeah, dog. Sorry. <laughs> so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm t this time, it's, uh, 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 so I reach out instinctively and I touch, um, I have tucked inside of my armor, I pull out uh, a, a stone, a necklace, and uh, uh, there's two. One is a name stone, it's, it's essentially uh, like a dog collar, it's given to the first knights. I have one that's mine, and I have another one that's a Vandrin's that I kept with me. I pull them both out and I hold them in my hands just because, out of impulse, and I activate Divine Sense from that. The edge of the chamber on the far wall, you walk around the headboard of the bed against, again, everything is compressed into this magical circle. You look at the edge of the room. Illusory or not, there is a, uh, uh, this place is, has like a lot of association with water a lot of like water feeling in this place. And you see there is a wall that has a stream of water pouring down it, very slight, making almost no noise, almost like those slate fountains that just have a sheet of water coming down them. You look into it. You activate your divine sense. You've never detected anything fiendish before. Or at least, Maybe you thought you did, but it was nothing compared to this. It was nothing compared to this. In the reflection of the bed, in the wall of water coming down the dark stone, lights reflecting, Carwin is not in the bed. You see a horned figure in red, bleeding and dying in the bed. The last time you saw this figure was the size of a mountain. Does it look at me? It doesn't appear able to. It looks like it is dying, grievously injured. Mm -mm. I'm approaching. Do you approach the wall, or do you approach Carwin in the bed? Well, so so the I'm, I didn't. My divine sense didn't ping the bed. I'm just seeing this be revealed. It pinged the wall. Oh yes, Carwin has a slight celestial presence just due to being an oracle. The fiendish presence in the reflection overpowers everything. Mm. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Bro. I, <laughs> I'm going to face that uh, that water where that ping came from. Show yourself. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Show yourself. Is that coming from the wall or coming That's from? That's coming the from the wall. It's coming from the reflection. Um, mm. I am. Uh, 
I approach it. Zarek says, you know me. I know you well. You saved me. This, I'm walking towards that. Yeah, you have reached the wall. I put my hand on it. Does Xerxes want to go through? Ah! He goes through. Ah! <laughs> you are in another time, another realm. This is why you don't leave your buddy. This is why we have buddies. Everyone was insistent that Tearaway is yeah, better with one. He's taking a bath. Cool. He's scrubbing his bum. So, Fyra, please come out. <laughs> I can't get the bottom of my feet. <laughs> uh, you see, uh, you walk through. Silver mist, a bed soaked with blood, and you smell the smell of blood, but you see a wheezing, rasping devil. Same one. Same one. Now your size, now the size of a man. I can't really die. So you don't, I'm not in danger right now, it just hurts, that's all. What's happened to you? Well, you came in before the Dawn Father could destroy it. So that was real? It's all been real. It's all been real. I get closer. You know me. Then who are you? Betrayer. Sinner. Most unclean. I am the Lord of the Hells. And... I don't believe in the gods. Lately, I don't much either. Give me your hand. <clears throat> and he puts a blood soaked hand in your hand. Feels weak. Feels. I heal him. I cast cure, you. cure wounds on him. <sighs> Shall I roll it or does it matter? <laughs> uh, it removes him from the dying condition. It removes him from making death saves. Um, the Lord of Hells. The Lord of Hells. The name they gave you. Or the name you gave yourself. When you get to the table, and there's not much left but scraps, you take what you're given. Why are you here? I don't know. I don't know. I left where I was. And now I'm here. I'm, I'm looking, I'm scanning his entire body, his face, I'm looking for. Uh, he, yeah. Uh, if you want, l let me know what you want to do. If you want to give me an insight check, you can. If you want to, if, you, if you're doing a divine sense, he is registering as fiendish yeah. to you. I, I'm looking for the traces of, of, of what he's endured on his face, you know? Like, I'm expecting broken, and I feel like I'm just seeing hurt and bewildered. He seems hurt and bewildered. He, you know people well enough. Mm -hmm. Not everyone shows you how broken they are when they're first meeting you. I take his hand again, and I look him in the eyes, and I say, what have they done to you? I want to know everything. You look, and for the first time now that he is no longer writhing in pain, 
This man is beautiful. He, he bears in passing almost a resemblance, if it can be said, to Evandrin. Oh, why'd you do that? Why? I knew you were gonna say that. What does that mean, though? I can't help but his name just falls out of my mouth, Evandrin. I I don't look the same to everybody. Oh. oh. They said before before it all went wrong, they said I was the most beautiful of them all. You were. But as well you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and so I sometimes look like the most beautiful face that mortals have seen. Oh my God, that's so Why does he look like me? <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you and says, Evandrin. That's the name you just said. Yeah. That was your love. Yes. It was. Why do you remind me of him? Only you could answer that. I never know who I'm going to look like to people. <sighs> Is this a trick? Are you playing with me? People often think I'm tricking them and I never have anything to say to that. What can you say to someone when they think that you're always going to trick them? Promise. No. I don't know of Andrin, but he must have been a very good man because you know, he's not in my realm. Okay. Let's get you cleaned up. What? I, I have known only darkness for so long, and even before that, no one has shown me kindness. That's gonna change, and that's a damn shame. Um, This is your home. Don't you forget that. You belong here. <laughs> He sits up in the bed, and and there are bedclothes here, there's fabric. If you wish to dress his wounds and yeah. clean him up, you can. I will do so with the utmost care. Um, uh, you do so with the, the utmost care. As you do so, um, he smiles. He, he says, well, while you're cleaning up a god of darkness and fire? Is there anything I can do to repay the favor? We, this is not Exandria yet. I don't know where I am, not where I was, but I'm not home You're in between, yet. and you are coming, is that it? Someone has done something. Someone has broken you out of wherever you once were. The door opened. Yes, that's true. And you walk through it? Oh, the door opened more explosively than I can say. It opened and we all tumbled out. It was not, it was not a kind place behind that door. And the, for lack of a better word, pressure behind it was enormous. It was a place made to teach us a lesson. It was your punishment. Do you remember what you've done and why they sent you there? We came to a young world. We came to a world of raw, 
elemental wonder of chaos and exultant passion of energy vaster and more potent than anything we had beheld in the cosmos. We came here and we began to shape what we could, what we dreamed. The primordials primordials were here when we arrived. It was their world first. We arrived and we began to shape. We offered our creations. I saw... Will you do something for me, please? Yes. Will you kneel with me? I will. I want to hear everything. He kneels with you. I cast ceremony. <laughs> you cast ceremony with him. Marriage? <laughs> atonement. <sighs> you begin to cast atonement. As you begin to cast it, you see he looks, and I, be I believe the casting time of, of ceremony is... Is an hour. Is an hour. You begin to cast atonement. Um. As you cast this spell, um, you focus in, he kneels with you and he says, we started to make our creations and I, I did as I, I thought I must. I, I, I was a celestial. I was a I was a celestial of, of light and and they they were creating truth and love and honor. They were creating courage and mortal beings. They they were creating choices and and Many of the gods spoke first. Many of the gods spoke first and long, and it was a long time before I spoke, and much had already been said, and I thought to help. I had seen the gifts of love and courage and truth and honor and sacrifice, and I said, these are the greatest gifts we could create, and we must make them matter. And I said, these, these will matter because in their absence, we will know deceit. And in their absence, we will know betrayal. In the absence of love, there will be viciousness. I, I thought I was expanding on a creation. I thought I was making something that would make the earlier work more, more. And then years passed and time passed and the gifts I had made, mortals called them evil, said that they were wicked, said that they were wrong. And I said, well, yes, but that is the point, is it not? That, 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 and they hated me and none said prayers to my name. And I turned to my kin and my brethren and I, I said, does this strike you as fair? None of them spoke. None of them said a word in my defense. All were happy to watch as my gifts were not seen for what I intended them to be. And then the others decided to grant even more. It, many of us were already hated. Many of us already were seen as something worse, something abominable. But that, those stories, those things that shaped that, they were aided or egged on or pushed forward by the others. and. In that time of pain and sorrow, they then stepped forward and gave more gifts. They they gave magic, the 
primordials, they were giving the ability to shape reality to the things that they had used their ability to shape reality to shape. We had already lent on the hospitality of the primordials enough. We had lent on it enough. And we stepped in and said, the game has gone on too far. The primordials rose up against them and, and the prime deities, as they called themselves, stepped in to fight them, to double down on their overreach. Our promises were to the primordials, and we were called betrayers! I, I lay my hand on his chest. Easy. I have been burning for so long. They used you. They did. And I'm sorry for that. I can help you. You say you know me. When the time comes and you step from this void into our world, don't you forget me. Don't you forget the kindness that we're capable of, because we're your children, too. We are made of the same stuff that what you initially created, we come from the same thing. And if you remember the stories as well as you seem to, then you know that at some point you turned your pain on us. They used you and then you used us to get back at them. I have a son that's not of my blood, but that is my son. I met Evandrin when he was just an infant and I held that boy in my arms and I fell in love with him. I am his father, but he is not of my blood. And in that same way, we are your children. Please remember that. Don't take your pain out on us. Spare us. And I will help you. I will help you confront those that did this to you. I don't give my word lightly. You have my word on this. Xerxes Ilorez. Not for all the ages of the world will I forget you. You are not I see faults in people. I know what they have done wrong. Do you want to know your fault, Xerxes? You are very trusting. You say that I am being used. You, my friend, are being used. By you. I am the father of lies. You are being lied to and not by any god. I turn around and look back through the portal that I walked through. Um, as you begin to go back through the portal. I'm not moving just yet, I just turn. <laughs> you turn to look. You see out there, you look back out through the, through the portal, um, your, you see your body um, is on the ground next to the bed, and your eyes have rolled back in your head. You're you're having a vision. You recognize, like, oh, oh when okay. I walk towards the water, that was me ejecting from my body. I'm. You realize, yeah. oh, I am an oracle. I am fully one of the people of this hall. Like this, this is me, right? Mm. Um, uh, you see, he 
look, you look out into the room and you see the Lord of the Hells goes, is that it out there? That's, that's the world. Yes, it is. Where, what part of Exandria are we in? Maybe it's all changed since the last time I was there. I don't know. I won't lie to you. It's called Avalir. Avalir. Uh, Avalir. Flying over Dominus, yes? Yes. Is Dominus still beautiful? Parts of it, yes. Aspects of it. I always said, I, we're not, we're, we were supposed to take credit for it all equally. Dominus was my favorite. But I always, <sighs> I always said, on the face of Exandria, Dominus was the smile. It truly is. It is. There is nothing like it. I have to leave you. I'm going back. What became of Evandrin? I don't quite know. Some sort of illness that was beyond my reach took him. The vision I had with you showed him walking towards a tree. There are some less than kind workings of magic on some trees of old. <sighs> he was spitting up something that became intangible, and he, I felt him sort of fading when I picked him up, desperately trying to find some sort of a cure that was nowhere to be found. It wasn't from anything from this world that I could understand. Nobody could help. Uh, hmm. Why was he in the dream? Connection. His spirit was somehow near. I don't know how to describe it. Did you ever try, after his passing, to bring him back? I tried to stop it from happening. And I never found him, really, when he passed. But I did everything I could to stop it. Great and many are the powers of mortals to stop poisons, diseases, afflictions, and curses. I know. Nobody would help. I know that city had some way of bringing him back. How there, could they not? There are few you can trust. Very few. I don't know much. I have been away for quite some time, but of my domain, I am certain. I am the father of lies, and there are many lies in the city you call home. I don't call this city home. The Lord of the Hells feels the impact of that. He looks at you and you have done me a great service and you have given me your trust but I understand that mortals will always have a part of their soul that recoils from me. It is the nature of the gifts I gave them. Then you made me wrong. 
um, he puts a hand on your shoulder and interrupts your casting of atonement and instead casts a spell on you and puts a protection from evil and good on you. Mm. That will protect you from myself, from Celestials, from Fae. Thank you. You see, he... Uh... uh, you see, do <laughs> take a bath. And I just want to. I just want to. You see that uh, uh, he says, "Time for that will come later." And you have work in Exandria in the mortal realm. I am trapped in a space in between. Something. There's a poison. There is a poison in your city. And I think you know the shape of it. I give him a nod. As I just innately just start to feel like my time here is Mm -hmm. up. I start to step away from him and I walk towards the portal. Mm And I, as I start to step through it, I turn around and I say to him, come find me. And I go through. Uh, you walk through, you leave, you come back into your body on the floor with the tight muscles of someone who has been like spasming in a state of religious ecstasy oh. and stand up out uh, in the chamber, because that uh, you you have been occupied for a moment, Sophira approaches you, um, Guildmaster uh, Nidus. Um, this was the first. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> uh, the promise of the premise. Um, you see that uh, you uh, comes over and says, "This was um, this was the first prophecy." that Carwin gave around two weeks ago. We wrote it down. This was the first prophecy that was a, a false prophecy, we, that, that we knew that she, she had gone mad. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you, do you have your, uh, do you have a telecommunications device Shut next to you? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and send this to you because I want you to read this. You want me to read it? I want you to read it. Aloud? Let's go. Uh, I love it. Do I have a sense of how much time has passed? As you awaken? Oh, a bit. Okay. You've been here for a minute. Okay. Um, uh, Okay. I feel like I need a cigarette and I don't smoke. Um, So, um, Car went, uh, so so Fyra places this and says, this was the first prophecy that, uh, that let us know that she was matched and, and, and her fa- prophecies had become false. CBS Pharmacy, Lou, <laughs> remember to text OK to update your preference. <laughs> no, 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 Is this it? Yes, this is the one I just got. Get your booster shots. Get your booster shots. No, it should be there. Oh, I got it. You got it, good, good, good. Reply to, they're canceled. The stars are leaving us. Our hands cannot reach. The limbs of the tree can no longer scribe the name of our deliverance. We will soon be as broken as our promises. Avalier shall fall. All shall fall. And from our folly will the hands that forged the world banish themselves from the broken things they have made. This was deemed false. Yes. In that. Uh, oh, we spoke to a member of the Octothurge, um, and we, we delivered it and said, this is the prophecy. Um, and the, the uh, Guildmaster of the Guild of Divination um, uh, decreed that it was false. 
because it obviously can't be true. Obviously. Is that, that was the right decision, wasn't it? Something went wrong. They all went mad. Yes. Um, I think it is best that we continue to consider that fault. Continue to? That is, that is false. I misspoke. Guildmaster, is everything all right? Yes, of course. Um, um, I'm sure as soon as uh, Xerxes uh, leaves, we'll, um, we'll be on our way. Everything that Loris wanted us to take care of seems to have been handled. Xerxes begins to march up the corridor, and you see Nidus here. Um, it is... Uh, now, as you are all wrapping up your business, it's about one o'clock in the morning. Um, you get uh, a, as you're leaving the Magisterium, you get a ping on your um, uh, ring of masks um, from Akami Ro, the uh, helmswoman of Avalir. Oh, hold on. And I fire it up and look off. Um, Akami, uh, Architect Arcane. Great news. We are in position over Kath Moira. All is well. We are now at the intersection of all three ley lines. And as of this moment, descent has begun. Hooray! Descent. Uh, no, nothing uh, of note to report. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything of note to report. Um, uh, the, uh, so, you know, uh, at this point, the entire process is uh, automated. Uh, this is, we, we've begun the protocol, so the Broomstone Enchantment is working. Um, the, uh, the lay rudder, I went to go disactivate the lay rudder because we don't need it anymore, but there was a block that had your signature on it, so the lay rudder is still yeah. active. Yeah, uh, go ahead and leave that active. Uh, don't worry about it. It's pulling a, a minutia, a, a negligible amount of power. We're fine. This is good. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to stay here just in case. Obviously, the whole rest of the process is automated, but just in case anything. <laughs> nope. Mask. Goes neutral. Blank. What? Ah, uh, the fuck. Okay, a, a bad thing. Just we have to go to the helm now. Now. What now. Oh. Uh, now. All right. Um, can I like for port. port us? Um, you guys can assemble porters. Do you communicate that over? Um, yeah. Over the telepathic bond Rally to the helm. Yeah, yeah, this man yeah, talk yeah. to a, a god. You don't know yet that this man talked to a god. Well, then in that case, the helm is the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that gets communicated over the telepathic bond. Yep, right. The helmswoman was just attacked. We had meet now. Uh, so, um, all of you uh, uh, hear this and begin to sprint towards uh, the helm, uh, which is uh, uh, off in Dawn's Ledge. You head to the neighborhood of Dawn's Ledge. As you begin to convene on that, um, you know, flying, teleporting, moving in as fast as possible, uh, you begin to uh, move through the streets. Um, you begin to approach uh, the helm. You see the building um, up ahead of you. All of you convene again here in this moment. Um, you hear far from Excelsior Plaza still. The, now the fireworks extravaganza is kind of dying down. Um, you see that you still hear revelry and applause. Um, and you can see, you feel the hum of now three ley lines converging in one and the city is descending. You can feel, you actually see now clouds on the horizon, like slowly rising up as the city begins to descend. Um, you walk through um, this neighborhood, uh, and as you are walking, uh, you hear a voice speak out. Ah, the Ring of Brass, uh, and Lycretia Hollow. Uh, turn, uh, looks at you, uh, says. Looks at us? She's. She's in front of us? Not just her. 
You look around at the rooftops around you. I'm gonna need everyone here to roll initiative. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> and that's all for this episode oh, no! of Exodus Beyond Limited Calamity. Tune in no! next week. No! And we'll see. We're gonna kill this woman. We're gonna kill this woman. What did you do? What did you do? What is happening? What I don't know. I spent the whole time going like, oh no, maybe I blew what the cause. Like, you did it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Amazing. We can all take turns causing the apocalypse exactly, together. Exactly. We all had a hand in this crucifixion. I remember, is it Thursday? Yeah. Is it Thursday yet? Huh. <laughs> it's it's this is your it's Thursday now, but now it's your it's gonna be the next Thursday is the next show, and we wanna know if it's Thursday yet. Uh, Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'll take <laughs>